Today, I'm explaining every entry from the Ultimate Solar System iceberg. We'll go from the more commonly known entries at the top like planets, moons and fascinating unexplained phenomena within them that are never mentioned in the media, such as mysterious lunar swirls, to the lesser known, controversial and somewhat unhinged solar system entries at the bottom. This video took me a very long time to make, so don't forget to subscribe as it would be nice to achieve a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. I hope you're having a wonderful day today and let's dive straight into the first tier of this ultimate solar system iceberg. The Sun is a G-type main sequence star, commonly referred to as a yellow dwarf. It is the central and most massive object in our solar system, containing about 99.86% of the solar system's total mass. The Sun is primarily composed of hydrogen, about 74% by mass, and helium, about 24% by mass with trace amounts of heavier elements. The Sun's energy is produced for a process called nuclear fusion that occurs in its core. High temperatures and pressures cause hydrogen atoms to fuse into helium, releasing an immense amount of energy in the form of light and heat. This process, known as thermonuclear fusion, is responsible for the Sun's ability to radiate energy and sustain life on Earth. While our understanding of the Sun has significantly advanced, there are still phenomena and characteristics that scientists find challenging to explain fully. One such unexplained fact is the mystery of the Sun's corona. The solar corona is the outermost layer of the Sun's atmosphere, and it is much hotter than the layers closer to the Sun's core. This phenomenon is counterintuitive because, according to our understanding of heat transfer, the temperature should decrease as you move away from a heat source. The Sun's surface temperature is above 5500 degrees Celsius or 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit while the corona's temperature can reach millions of degrees. One proposed explanation involves the complex magnetic field interactions in the Sun's atmosphere, leading to the acceleration of particles and the heating of the corona. The reason behind the corona's extreme heat is not yet fully understood, and scientists are actively researching various theories to explain this anomaly. Pluto's degradation. Pluto is a dwarf planet located in the Kuiper Belt, a region of the solar system beyond Neptune. This entry probably refers to the fact that Pluto was reclassified from a full-fledged planet to a dwarf planet by the International Astronomical Union in 2006 due to its size and characteristics, as well as the discovery of other similar objects in the Kuiper Belt. Pluto's reclassification was a result of ongoing scientific understanding and refinement of definitions for celestial bodies. The Moon is Earth's only natural satellite and is the fifth largest moon in the solar system. The Moon plays a crucial role in various natural phenomena on Earth, such as tides due to its gravitational influence. However, the Moon may boast with its own interest in phenomena such as transient lunar phenomena. There have been anecdotal reports of short-lived changes in the brightness, color or appearance of lunar features known as transient lunar phenomena. These events are often challenging to observe and study, and their exact nature and causes remain unclear. Some scientists suggest that they could be related to the release of gas from the Moon's interior. One intriguing and unexplained fact about the Moon is the presence of a special type of swirls called lunar swirls. These are bright, sinuous patterns found on the lunar surface often associated with areas of strong magnetic anomalies. One of the most notable examples is the Rainer Gamma Swirl, located in the Oceanus Procellarum region. Some hypotheses suggest that swirls may result from the interaction of the Moon's magnetic field with solar wind, causing the selective shielding of the surface from space weathering processes. Despite various theories, the exact processes responsible for the formation of lunar swirls are not fully understood. Mercury is the smallest and innermost planet in our solar system, orbiting the Sun at an average distance of about 36 million miles or 58 million kilometers. It's named after the Roman messenger god known for his speed, which is fitting given Mercury's swift orbit around the Sun. A day on Mercury, the time it takes to rotate on its axis, lasts about 59 Earth days, but its year, the time it takes to orbit the Sun, is only about 88 Earth days. Mercury experiences some of the most extreme temperature variations in the solar system. Due to its lack of a substantial atmosphere to retain heat, surface temperatures can reach scorching highs of around 427 degrees Celsius during its day, however at night temperatures may plummet to minus 179 degrees Celsius due to the absence of an atmosphere to trap heat. This extreme temperature range is more substantial than on any other planet in our solar system. Despite its proximity to the Sun and the intense heat it experiences, Mercury has areas near its poles that are in permanent shadow. In these shadowed craters, scientists have discovered deposits of water ice Ice. These areas are shielded from the sun's rays, allowing ice to persist in the extreme conditions. 
the rocky and gas planets. The entry probably refers to the arrangement of rocky planets closer to the sun and gas giants farther away, which is a result of the solar system's formation and evolution. This pattern can be explained by the solar nebula hypothesis, which is the most widely accepted model for the formation of the solar system. About 4.6 billion years ago, large interstellar cloud of gas and dust called the solar nebula began to collapse under the influence of gravity. This collapse was triggered by a nearby supernova or some other disturbance. As the solar nebula collapsed, it began to spin and flatten into a rotation disk due to conservation of angular momentum. Most of the material collected at the center to form the Sun, the protostar. The remaining material in the spinning disk began to clump together due to gravity, forming smaller, solid particles called planetesimals. These planetesimals continued to collide and accrete, forming larger bodies known as protoplanets. The inner part of the protoplanetary disk closer to the Sun was hotter and volatile substances like water and gases could not condense effectively. As a result, only solid material materials like metals and rocks were able to form planets in this region. These planets became the rocky terrestrial planets including Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars. In the outer regions of the protoplanetary disk, where it was colder, volatile gases like hydrogen and helium were able to condense and form icy planetesimals. These icy bodies grew larger and became the cores of the giant planets like Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. Comets Comets are celestial bodies that orbit the Sun in highly elongated elliptical orbits. The solid, central part of a comet is called the nucleus. It's typically a few kilometers in diameter and contains water, ice, frozen gases, dust and other volatile compounds. As a comet approaches the Sun, the heat causes the nucleus to release gas and dust, creating a glowing coma around it. The coma can be larger than the nucleus and is often illuminated by sunlight. Solar wind and radiation pressure push the released material away from the Sun, forming a bright tail that always points in the opposite direction of the Sun. There are two types of tails, a dust tail and an ion tail. The dust tail is composed of smaller particles, while the ion tail is made up of ionized gases. Comets are believed to be remnants from the early solar system containing pristine materials that have remained relatively unchanged for billions of years. Studying comets provides valuable insights into the conditions and composition of the early solar system. In for comet shoemaker Levy 9 captured the world's attention when it collided with Jupiter. This event marked the first observed collision between two celestial bodies in our solar system and provided valuable information about the dynamics of such impacts. While some comets follow well-defined paths and are periodic, returning at regular intervals, others may be new and appear in the sky unexpectedly. Comets can also break apart or disintegrate during their journey around the Sun. Venus. Venus is the second planet from the Sun and shares similarities with Earth in terms of mass and size. It has a dense atmosphere, primarily composed of carbon dioxide, creating a strong greenhouse effect that results in extreme surface conditions, with a mean temperature of around 460 degrees Celsius and high atmospheric pressure. In 1961, Venus became the target of the first interplanetary flight in human history, leading to essential milestones such as the first soft landing to another planet in 1970. The planet has a weak induced magnetosphere and lacks a substantial atmosphere, making conditions at its cloud layers potentially favorable for life. While Venus may have had liquid water in its early history, it experienced a runaway greenhouse effect that led to the evaporation of any surface water into space. Recent studies suggest that Venus might have had plate tectonics in ancient times, potentially creating a more habitable environment. One of the fascinating and unexplained features of Venus is its superrotation of the atmosphere. While the planet rotates slowly on its axis, the atmosphere rotates much more quickly, completing a full rotation around the planet in about 4 Earth days. The exact mechanism behind Venus's superrotation is not fully understood. It is believed to be driven by atmospheric circulation patterns and the interaction between the atmosphere and the planet's surface. The rings of Saturn are the most extreme ring system among all the other planets in our solar system. Composed of numerous small particles varying in size from micrometers to meters, these particles orbit around Saturn. Primarily made of water ice with a small amount of rocky material, the exact mechanism of their formation remains unclear with debates on whether they formed early or relatively late in the solar system's history. The rings were observed by Galileo Galilei in 1610, though their true nature was not discerned at the time. Christian Huygens in 1655 was the first to describe them as a disk surrounding Saturn. Pierre-Simon Laplace introduced the idea that the rings consist of tiny ringlets, but the gaps between these ringlets indicate a more accurate depiction of the rings as an annular disk with variations in density and brightness. Saturn's rings have gaps, some created by embedded 
moons and other locations with destabilizing orbital resonances with Saturn's moons. Stabilizing resonances contribute to the longevity of certain rings. Beyond the main rings is the Phoebe ring, likely originating from Saturn's moon Phoebe and sharing its retrograde orbital motion. In September of 2023, astronomers suggested that the rings might have formed from the collision of two moons hundreds of millions of years ago. This hypothesis adds to the ongoing scientific inquiry into the fascinating and dynamic nature of Saturn's iconic ring system. Earth, the third planet from the Sun, stands as a remarkable celestial body hosting the marvel of life. Unique in our solar system, it is a water world, boasting liquid surface water, a feature vital for sustaining diverse forms of life. The global ocean blankets 70% of Earth's crust, with the remaining 30% forming continental land masses, predominantly concentrated in one hemisphere. The Earth's crust, shaped by slow-moving tectonic plates, gives rise to geological features such as mountains, volcanoes and earthquakes. A liquid outer core generates a protective magnetosphere, shielding against solar winds and cosmic radiation. The atmosphere, predominantly composed of nitrogen and oxygen, plays a crucial role in maintaining surface conditions and safeguarding against meteoroids and UV radiation. Greenhouse gases, notably water vapor and carbon dioxide, trap solar energy, sustaining an average surface temperature of 14.7 degrees Celsius. Geographic variations in energy capture drive global climate systems, influencing weather patterns and supporting in essential cycles like nitrogen. With an ellipsoidal shape and a circumference of about 40,000 kilometers, Earth is the densest and largest rocky planet in the solar system. Positioned approximately 8 light minutes from the Sun, it completes a yearly orbit in roughly 365.25 days, rotating on its axis every 23 hours and 56 minutes, leading to seasonal changes. The Moon, Earth's singular natural satellite, orbits at 384,000 kilometers, influencing tides and stabilizing the planet's axis. Formed 4.5 billion years ago, Earth has been a witness to the emergence of life, marked by significant events such as the Great Oxidation event 2 billion years ago. Humanity, appearing 300,000 years ago, has left an indelible mark on the planet, impacting its environment and climate in ways that raise concerns about sustainability, biodiversity and the future of life on Earth. NASA, or the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, is the United States government agency responsible for the nation's civilian space program and for aeronautics and aerospace research. NASA was established on July 29, 1958, by the National Aeronautics and Space Act, which was signed into law by President Dwight Eisenhower. The agency's formation was a response to the Soviet Union's successful launch of the first artificial satellite Sputnik 1 in 1957, marking the beginning of the space race between the United States and the Soviet Union during Cold War. NASA's Apollo program achieved the historical feat of landing humans on the Moon. The first successful manned Moon landing was Apollo 11 in 1969 with astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. NASA's Space Shuttle, operational from 1981 to 2011, facilitated satellite deployment, scientific experiments and assembly of the International Space Station. Mars rovers such as Spirit, Opportunity and Curiosity provided essential data on Mars. The Hubble Space Telescope, launched in 1990, offered stunning images and data data on distant celestial objects. NASA's key role in the development and operation on the International Space Station involves microgravity research, and the Mars Perseverance rover, launched in 2020, aims to explore Mars, search for past microbial life, and collect samples for potential return to Earth. How exciting! However, some conspiracy theorists suggest that NASA is hiding the existence of a rogue planet, Nibiru or Planet X, that is on a collision course with Earth. Scientists and astronomers have repeatedly debunked these claims, as there is no no credible evidence for the existence of such a planet. Eclipses Eclipses occur when one celestial body passes into the shadow of another celestial body, resulting in a temporary decrease in light or a darkening of the eclipsed object. There are two main types of eclipses observed from Earth, solar eclipses and lunar eclipses. One fascinating aspect of solar eclipses is the phenomenon called the diamond ring effect. Just before and after a total solar eclipse, when the Sun is almost entirely covered by the Moon, a small portion of sunlight can still shine through a valley on the Moon's limb. This creates the appearance of a shining diamond ring in the sky with a bright solar corona resembling a ring and the valley on the moon appearing as a sparkling gem. The diamond ring effect adds a breathtaking and awe-inspiring moment to the experience of witnessing a total solar eclipse. Eclipses are not exclusive to Earth, they can transpire on other planets within our solar system. The specifics of these celestial events hinge on factors like a planet's size, the presence of moons and its position in relation to the Sun. Mars, with its moons focused
Phobos and Deimos encounter solar eclipses when Phobos transits the Sun from the Martian surface. Jupiter, boasting numerous moons, including the Galilean Quartet, experiences eclipses as these moons cast shadows on the giant planet. Saturn, akin to Jupiter, undergoes eclipses caused by some of its moons, notably Titan. The diversity of these occurrences stems from variations in planetary size, moon characteristics and orbital dynamics. Mars, the fourth planet from the Sun in our solar system, is often referred to as the Red Planet due to its rusty, iron-rich surface. It is a terrestrial planet with a thin atmosphere composed mostly of carbon dioxide. Mars has been a subject of scientific interest and exploration for many years, with numerous spacecraft and rovers sent to study its surface and conditions. Notable features on Mars include the largest volcano in the solar system, Olympus Mons, and the extensive canyon system, Valles Marineris. The planet also has polar ice caps composed of water and dry ice. One of the intriguing mysteries on Mars revolves around recurrent slope lineae, or RSL. These are dark streaks that appear seasonally on the Martian slopes, particularly in the warmer months. While their formation has been linked to the flow of liquid water, the exact source and nature of this water remain uncertain. The appearance and disappearance of these features have puzzled scientists, as they seem to suggest a transient flow of briny water, yet the mechanisms behind this phenomenon are not fully understood. Rockets. Rockets are vehicles designed to propel themselves into space or through the Earth's atmosphere by expelling exhaust gases produced by combustion of onboard propellants. They operate on the principle of Newton's third law of motion, which states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Rockets consist of various components, including a propulsion system, guidance system and payload. One intriguing and unexplained aspect of rocketry is the phenomenon known as the anomaly of unexpected acceleration. Several spacecraft, including some deep space probes, have experienced unexplained increases in acceleration, deviating from the expected trajectory predicted by classical physics. This anomaly has been observed in certain spacecraft such as Pioneer 10 and 11 and the Galileo spacecraft. Proposed explanations include the influence of thermal radiation or some unknown physical forces. Despite extensive research, the anomaly remains an open question in the field of faster dynamics. Elon Musk Elon Musk's connection with SpaceX is synonymous with his bold vision to revolutionize space exploration. Founding the aerospace company in 2002, Musk aimed to address the limitations and high costs associated with space travel. His personal commitment to advancing technology in this field led him to invest substantial personal capital into SpaceX. Musk's role extends beyond that of a traditional CEO. He is intricately involved in the technical aspects and strategic direction of the company. One of SpaceX's groundbreaking achievements under Musk's leadership has been the development of reusable rocket technology, a paradigm shift that has significantly reduced the economic barriers to space exploration. SpaceX, under Musk's guidance, has reached milestones such as launching the first privately funded spacecraft into orbit, talking with the International Space Station and perfecting the recovery and reuse of rocket components. These accomplishments have not only positioned SpaceX as a key player in aerospace industry, but have also redefined possibilities for future space endeavors. Musk's unwavering dedication to SpaceX reflects his broader ambition to make human life multiplanetary, marking a compelling synergy between his vision and the company's mission. Musk's wealth, estimated at around $222 billion in December of 2023, primarily stems from his ownership stakes in Tesla and SpaceX. Despite his success, Musk has faced criticism for controversial statements, including COVID-19 misinformation, transphobia and anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. His ownership of Twitter and involvement in contentious decisions, such as layoffs and changes to Twitter blue verification, has also contributed to his polarizing public image. Musk's history includes legal issues such as a $20 million fine and stepping down as Tesla chairman following an SEC lawsuit related to false funding claims in 2018. Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system, is a gas giant with a diameter over 11 times that of Earth. Its immense size and powerful magnetic field make it a fascinating celestial body. Composed mainly of hydrogen and helium, Jupiter lacks a solid surface and its turbulent atmosphere features colorful bands of clouds, including the iconic Great Red Spot, an enormous storm system that has raged for centuries. One of the intriguing mysteries surrounding Jupiter is the nature of its core. Despite extensive research and data gathered by spacecraft like NASA's Juno mission, scientists have yet to definitely determine the characteristics of Jupiter's core. The prevailing theory suggests 
just a dense, rocky core enveloped in metallic hydrogen, but uncertainties persist. The lack of a clear understanding of the core raises questions about the planet's formation and early history. Moreover, Jupiter plays a crucial role in the dynamics of the solar system, influencing the orbits of other planets and asteroids. Its gravitational pull has likely shielded Earth from numerous comet impacts, making it a celestial guardian in our cosmic neighborhood. As scientists continue to explore and study Jupiter, its enigmatic core remains one of the solar system's most captivating puzzles. Saturn, the sixth planet from the Sun in our solar system, is a gas giant known for its stunning ring system, making it one of the most visually striking celestial bodies. The planet itself is primarily composed of hydrogen and helium with traces of methane, ammonia, water vapor and other elements. Saturn's atmosphere is characterized by colorful bands and zones, showcasing the planet's dynamic weather patterns. Saturn has an unexplained hexagonal storm pattern at its north pole. First observed by the Voyager spacecraft in the early 1980s and later confirmed confirmed by the Cassini mission, this hexagon is a persistently shaped cloud pattern with a six-sided geometric structure. Measuring approximately 20,000 miles in diameter, this phenomenon presents a meteorological puzzle that scientists are still striving to fully comprehend. The hexagon's origin and the mechanisms driving its stability remain unclear. Various hypotheses suggest that it may be connected to the planet's fast rotation, differential wind speeds or the interaction between atmospheric layers. However, scientists have not reached a consensus on the exact cause of this enigmatic feature. Saturn is home to an impressive collection of moons, with over 80 confirmed satellites. Titan, the largest of Saturn's moons, is particularly noteworthy. It is the only moon in the solar system with a substantial atmosphere, primarily composed of nitrogen and methane, but we're going to talk about it later. The Apollo 11 moon landing on July 20, 1969, marked a historic moment in human history as astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first humans to set foot on the lunar surface. Launched by NASA, the mission was the culmination of years of space exploration and technological advancements during the space race between the United States and the Soviet Union. The journey began with the liftoff of the Saturn V rocket from Kennedy Space Center on July 16, 1969, carrying Armstrong, Aldrin and Michael Collins. After a four-day journey, the lunar module named Eagle separated from the command module piloted by Collins and descended to the moon's surface. As millions watched on television, Armstrong stepped onto the lunar surface delivering his iconic words, that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. Aldrin soon followed and together they conducted experiments, planted the American flag and collected samples. However, amidst the awe-inspiring success of the Apollo 11 mission, some skeptics argue that the footage and photographs taken on the moon were staged in a studio on Earth, casting doubt on the authenticity of the moon landing. Despite overwhelming evidence supporting the mission's legitimacy, these conspiracy theories persist, often driven by skepticism, misinformation or a general distrust of official narratives. Martians in the late 19th century, the idea of intelligent Martians gained popularity fueled by observations and speculations about ancient civilizations. However, high-resolution mapping showed no signs of habitation. Mars has been a recurring theme in fiction, influenced by its red color and 19th century speculations about supporting life. The belief in Mars's habitability persisted until the 1920s, when it was debunked. Current understanding of planetary habitability favors liquid water on the surface, a challenge for Mars due to its thin atmosphere and low atmospheric pressure. The planet's harsh environmental conditions, lack of geological activity and past habitability raise questions about the possibility of past life. Uranus, the seventh planet from the Sun, is a unique and mysterious ice giant in our solar system. Discovered by German-born British astronomer Sir William Herschel in 1781, Uranus is characterized by its pale blue-green hue, which is attributed to the presence of methane in its atmosphere. This distant planet is known for its peculiar rotational axis. It rotates almost perpendicular to its orbital plane, causing it to appear to roll on its side as it orbits the Sun. This extreme tilt gives Uranus distinct seasons, with each pole experiencing 42 years of continuous sunlight followed by darkness. One of the most interesting phenomena associated with Uranus is the presence of irregular magnetic fields. Unlike the relatively symmetrical magnetic fields observed in other gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn, Uranus's magnetic field is off-center and tilted at an angle of about 60 degrees to its rotational axis. The cause of this unusual magnetic field configuration remains a subject of scientific speculation. Some theories propose that the planet's magnetic field is generated by a dynamic process deep 
within its icy interior, possibly influenced by convective motion or unique interactions between its core and surrounding ice layers. Moreover, Uranus is shrouded in mystery due to its limited exploration. The Voyager 2 spacecraft is the only spacecraft to have visited Uranus, passing by in 1986. Since then, no other missions have been specifically dedicated to studying this distant ice giant. Lack of direct observations and data poses challenges in fully understanding the planet's composition, atmospheric dynamics and the origin of its magnetic field anomalies. Neptune, the eighth and most distant planet from the Sun, stands as the fourth largest in the solar system by diameter and the third most massive, characterized by its dense giant composition, approximately 17 times the mass of Earth and slightly more massive than its counterpart Uranus. Neptune's greater mass leads to more gravitational compression of its primarily gaseous and liquid atmosphere, lacking a well-defined solid surface. Orbiting the Sun at distance, orbiting the Sun at the distance of 30 astronomical units, it completes one orbit every 160. 65 years. Unlike other planets visible to the naked eye, Neptune was discovered through mathematical predictions due to unexpected changes in Uranus's orbit. Independently predicted by John Couch Adams and Urban Verrier, Neptune's position was confirmed by Johann Galle in 1846. The planet's largest moon, Triton, was discovered shortly thereafter, and subsequent telescopic advancements in the 20th century revealed its remaining 14 moons. Similar to Jupiter and Saturn, Neptune's atmosphere primarily consists of hydrogen and helium with traces of hydrogen hydrocarbons, nitrogen and a higher proportion of ices such as water, ammonia and methane. The planet's atmosphere is more dynamic than Uranus's, featuring visible weather patterns, including the Great Dark Spot observed during the Voyager 2 flyby in 1989. With the strongest sustained winds in the solar system reaching speeds of 2100 km per hour, Neptune's outer atmosphere is one of the coldest regions, while its center maintains extremely high temperatures. Additionally, Neptune possesses a faint and fragmented ring system discovered in 19 1984 and later confirmed by Voyager 2 in 1989. Asteroids Asteroids are small rocky objects that orbit the Sun, primarily found in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. They vary in size from a few meters to hundreds of kilometers in diameter, with the largest such as Ceres, classified as dwarf planets. Composed mostly of minerals and metals, asteroids are remnants from the early solar system and offer valuable insights into its formation. One intriguing aspect of asteroids involves certain unexplained phenomena associated with their behavior. Some asteroids exhibit unexpected changes in brightness, a phenomenon known as asteroid outbursts. These sudden, temporary increases in brightness can't be fully explained by known processes, such as the release of volatile materials or rotational changes. Scientists speculate that factors like internal fractures, disintegration events or the ejection of dust and debris could be responsible, but the exact mechanisms remain elusive, as scientists continue to explore asteroids for space missions and observational studies. Unlocking the mysteries behind their outbursts may uncover vital clues about the early solar system and even help refine strategies for planetary defense against potentially hazardous asteroids. Now we're diving into Tier 2 with the first entry being Dwarf Planets. Dwarf Planets exist because they are a distinct category of celestial bodies that share characteristics with both planets and asteroids. The International Astronomical Union defines a dwarf planet as a celestial body that orbits the Sun, is spherical in shape, but has not cleared its orbital path of other debris. This last criterion is what distinguishes dwarf planets from regular planets. Unlike the eight classical planets, which have cleared their orbits of other debris and dominate their orbital zones, dwarf planets have not achieved this level of gravitational dominance. This lack of orbital clearance is often due to the presence of other objects such as asteroids or comets sharing the same orbital region. The most well-known example of a dwarf planet is Pluto, which was reclassified as a dwarf planet by the IAU in 2006. Other examples include Aries, Haumea, Maki Maki and Ceres. These objects are part of the larger population of small solar system bodies beyond Neptune known as the Kuiper Belt. Studying these objects helps scientists understand the dynamics and processes that shape the solar system building of years ago. Uranus is knocked on its side. Uranus is indeed peculiar in its axial tilt, being knocked on its side at an angle of about 98 degrees. This unique orientation sets Uranus apart from the predominantly upright planets in our solar system. The prevailing hypothesis explaining this axial tilt is a significant impact event during the planet's early history. Approximately 4 billion years ago, a massive collision with a celestial body, possibly a protoplanet or another large object, could have disrupted Uranus's normal axial rotation. This forceful impact might have caused the planet to tilt 
scale dramatically, resulting in its current extreme axial inclination. The remnants of this cosmic encounter, such as debris and ejected material, could have contributed to the formation of the extensive system of rings and moons around Uranus. While the exact details of this collision remain speculative, computer simulations and models support the likelihood of such an event. The aftermath of this cosmic collision not only tilted Uranus but also influenced its unique magnetic field, which is significantly off-center compared to the planet's core. JAXA, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, is a pioneering institution that plays a crucial role in advancing space exploration, scientific research and satellite development. Established in 2003, JAXA has rapidly evolved into a global space agency, collaborating with international partners and contributing to various space missions. JAXA's achievements include the development and deployment of advanced satellites such as Himawari and ALOS series, which have significantly enhanced Earth observation capabilities. Additionally, JAXA has been a key participant in the International Space Station program, contributing its Kibo laboratory module for scientific experiments in the unique microgravity environment. One intriguing aspect of JAXA's work involves its participation in asteroid exploration missions. The Hayabusa missions stand out as remarkable accomplishments, successfully collecting samples from asteroids Itokawa and Ryugu. These missions have provided valuable insights into the formation of our solar system and the potential for asteroid mining in the future. Transits. Transit is the passage of a celestial body across a specific point in the sky as observed from Earth. Formally, astronomers use this term to describe the apparent motion of planets and other objects across the celestial sphere. These celestial events play a pivotal role in various astronomical phenomena, such as planetary transits across the Sun, a rare spectacle where a planet passes directly between Earth and the Sun. Notable instances include the transit of Venus, a captivating occurrence that transpires in pairs separated by eight years, with over a century between each pair. The mysterious allure of transits extends beyond their scientific significance. Some ancient cultures attributed mystical significance to celestial transits, viewing them as cosmic omens or messages from the divine. Even in our modern, scientifically grounded era, the beauty and rarity of certain transits continue to evoke a sense of wonder, subtly reminding us of the vastness and complexity of the universe. Beyond our solar system, astronomers have identified exoplanets using the transit method. This involves observing a distant star and detecting periodic dimming of its light as an orbiting exoplanet exoplanet passes in front of it from our vantage point on Earth. The transit method has been crucial in the discovery of thousands of exoplanets, providing valuable insights into the diversity of planetary systems. The study of exoplanetary transits allows scientists to infer characteristics such as a planet's size, orbital period and even its atmosphere. Great Red Spot The Great Red Spot, a mesmerizing feature on Jupiter, captivates astronomers and enthusiasts alike. This colossal storm, which has been raging for at least 350 years, is a vast anticyclonic system, spanning an impressive 16,000 kilometers in width, making it approximately 1.3 times the Earth's diameter. Its distinctive reddish hue is attributed to complex molecules in Jupiter's atmosphere, reacting to ultraviolet light from the Sun. The Great Red Spot's longevity poses a captivating mystery, challenging our comprehension of atmospheric atmospheric dynamics. The exact mechanisms sustaining this enduring storm remain elusive, as conventional wisdom suggests that such storms should dissipate over time. The Great Red Spot has been monitored for centuries, and its dimensions have varied over time. However, recent observations indicate an noteworthy reduction in its size. While the exact reasons behind this contraction are not definitively understood, atmospheric dynamics, interactions with surrounding features and internal processes within Jupiter's complex atmosphere are all factors under consideration other moons. The diverse moons within our solar system provide a fascinating tapestry of celestial bodies, each with its own unique characteristics. From the icy giants of Saturn to the volcanic landscapes of Jupiter's Io, these natural satellites offer a glimpse into the dynamic processes shaping our cosmic neighborhood. One particularly intriguing moon is Europa, one of Jupiter's Galilean satellites. Europa is distinguished by its smooth, icy surface which conceals a subsurface ocean, believed to harbor twice the amount of water found on Earth. The subsurface ocean, kept in liquid state by tidal heating generated by Jupiter's gravitational forces, positions Europa as a potential contender in the search for extraterrestrial life. Mysteries persist, however, such as the unexplained geysers on Enceladus and other of Saturn's moons. These towering plumes of water vapor emanate from its south polar region, hinting at subsurface oceanic activity and contributing to the ongoing intrigue surrounding the potential for life beyond Earth. 
The James Webb Space Telescope stands as a marvel of modern astronomical engineering, poised to revolutionize our understanding of the universe. Scheduled to succeed the Hubble Space Telescope, the James Webb Telescope is designed to explore the cosmos in unprecedented detail, equipped with advanced instruments that can observe the universe in infrared wavelengths. One of the most captivating features of the James Webb Telescope is its sheer scale. With a 6.5 meter diameter mirror, it dwarfs the Hubble and is considered the most powerful space telescope ever built. Positioned at the second Lagrange point, approximately 1.5 million kilometers from the Earth, the telescope is strategically located to avoid interference from the Sun, Earth and Moon, providing a clear and unobstructed view of the cosmos. The James Webb Telescope's primary mission objectives encompass a wide array of astronomical inquiries, from studying the atmospheres of exoplanets to investigating the formation of the first galaxies in the early universe. The telescope's infrared capabilities enable it to peer through the cosmic dust clouds, unveiling celestial phenomena that were previously hidden from optical telescopes. However, the deployment and commissioning of the James Webb Space Telescope have not been without challenges and delays. Its development has been a testament to the complexity of building and launching such a cutting-edge instrument. The intricate unfolding of its sun shield, a crucial component to protect the sensitive instruments from the sun's heat and light, required delicate and precise engineering. Moreover, the James Webb Telescope has been the subject of much anticipation and speculation, given the significant investment and expectations associated with its mission. As it embarks on its scientific journey, astronomers and space enthusiasts eagerly await the groundbreaking discoveries that this remarkable telescope is poised to deliver, opening new chapters in our exploration of the cosmos. The Hubble Space Telescope, a pioneering observatory orbiting Earth since 1990, has become an icon in the realm of space exploration, delivering awe-inspiring images and invaluable scientific data. Named after the renowned astronomer Edwin Hubble, this space-based telescope has played a pivotal role in transforming our understanding of the universe. With a primary mirror measuring 2.4 meters in diameter, the Hubble Space Telescope has been instrumental in capturing stunning images of distant galaxies and other celestial phenomena. Positioned above Earth's distorting atmosphere, Sphere, Hubble has provided a remarkably clear view of the cosmos, allowing astronomers to peer deep into space and observe objects with unprecedented detail. One of the most intriguing aspects of the Hubble Space Telescope is its role in determining the rate of expansion of the universe. For precise measurements of distant supernovae and galaxies, Hubble's observations contributed to the groundbreaking discovery that the universe is expanding at an accelerated rate, driven by mysterious dark energy. This revelation earned three astronomers the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2011. While Hubble has been a stalwart contributor to scientific knowledge, its journey has not been without challenges. Shortly after its launch, it was discovered that a flaw in the telescope's primary mirror affected its ability to focus properly. A daring and successful servicing mission in 1993, conducted by astronauts aboard the Space Shuttle Endeavour, rectified the issue by installing corrective optics. This transformative mission, along with subsequent servicing missions, extended Hubble's operational lifespan and enhanced its scientific capabilities. As Hubble continues to orbit Earth, it remains a testament to human ingenuity and the quest for knowledge. Planets are named after gods. The tradition of naming planets after gods and goddesses has deep historical and cultural roots, often stemming from ancient mythology. In ancient civilizations, people looked to the skies and observed the movements of celestial bodies. The visible planets, due to their distinct motion against the background of fixed stars, were often associated with powerful deities in various mythologies. Naming planets after gods helped connect the earthly and celestial realms, providing a narrative for the movements of these luminous objects. The belief that celestial bodies influence human affairs and natural events played a a significant role in ancient cultures. Each planet was associated with specific qualities and influences, and attributing them to gods served as a symbolic representation of these celestial forces. Naming planets after gods may reflect the human tendency to seek meaning and order in the natural world. By attributing planetary movements to divine entities, ancient societies attempted to make sense of the complexities of the cosmos. The tradition of naming celestial bodies after mythological figures has persisted in the modern times, maintaining a connection between scientific exploration and the rich cultural history history of humanity. Uranus and Neptune's rings. Uranus and Neptune, the seventh and eighth planets in our solar system, boast a unique feature among the gas giants, their intricate ring systems. While not as prominent or well known as Saturn's iconic rings, Uranus is encircled by a system of 13 known rings, discovered largely through observations made during the Voyager 2 spacecraft flyby in 1986. The rings of Uranus are dark and narrow, composed of a combination of dust, rocks and ice particles. Unlike the well-defined rings of Saturn, those around Uranus are faint and challenging 
challenging to observe from Earth due to their low reflectivity. The rings are named after characters from the works of William Shakespeare and Alexander Pope. One of the most peculiar aspects of Uranus's rings is their unusual orientation, which typically align with their equators. Uranus's rings are nearly perpendicular to its orbit around the Sun. As I mentioned before, this tilt is thought to be the result of a collision with a massive celestial object in the planet's distant past, causing the entire system to tilt on its side. Neptune, similar to Uranus, possesses a ring system, albeit more complex and dynamic. Discovered in 1984 during ground-based observations, Neptune's rings are segmented, comprising a series of arcs rather than continuous bands. Like Uranus, Neptune's rings are composed of ice particles, rocks and dust. One of the most captivating features of Neptune's rings is the presence of ring arcs, such as the prominent Adam's ring. These arcs are believed to result from gravitational interactions with the moon Galatea, which acts as a shepherd moon, sculpting and maintaining the distant gaps and structures within the ring system. While the ring systems of Uranus and Neptune may not capture the same public attention as Saturn's, they contribute valuable insights into the complex interplay of gravitational forces, collisions and dynamics within these distant and enigmatic ice giants. Colonization of Mars Efforts toward the colonization of Mars represent a monumental stride in humanity's quest for interplanetary expansion. The vision to establish a sustainable human presence on the Red Planet is fueled by a combination of scientific curiosity, technological advancements and the aspiration for a multiplanetary future. This initiative involves intricate planning and the development of cutting-edge technologies, encompassing spacecraft design, life support systems and habitat construction. Formalized by entities like NASA, SpaceX and other international space agencies, the endeavor to Colonize Mars is characterized by meticulous missions aimed at exploring the planet's surface, atmosphere and geological composition. The deployment of rovers and robotic landers serves as precursors to eventual human arrival, enabling the collection of crucial data and insights into the challenges posed by Mars's unique environment. Amidst the scientific rigor, the colonization discourse harbors a blend of uncertainty and fascination. One intriguing aspect is the potential discovery of Martian anomalies, such as the unexplained recurrent methane spikes detected by orbiters and rovers. These periodic releases of methane, a gas associated with biological and geological processes, captivate scientists and space enthusiasts alike. The mystery surrounding the origin of these emissions sparks speculation about the possibility of microbial life or geothermal activities beneath the Martian surface. Planet 9 The hypothetical existence of Planet 9, a distant and yet-to-be-observed celestial body in our solar system, has stirred both scientific intrigue and popular fascination. Proposed to be a massive, icy world residing far behind Neptune, the quest to unveil the mysteries of Planet 9 represents a significant frontier in contemporary astrophysics. Formally introduced to explain peculiarities in the orbits of distant trans-Neptunian objects, the search for this elusive planet involves a combination of theoretical modeling, astronomical observations and computational simulations. Researchers postulate that Planet 9, if confirmed, could be a super-Earth or mini-Neptune, exerting gravitational influence on surrounding objects while remaining elusive to conventional telescopic detection methods. The theoretical characteristics of this celestial enigma raise questions about its formation, origin and potential effects on the dynamics of the outer solar system. Within the discourse of Planet 9, an intriguing facet emerges concerning the unexplained phenomena associated with its putative existence. One such mystery involves the apparent clustering of objects in the Kuiper Belt, a region of icy bodies beyond Neptune. The alignment and orientation of these distant objects have prompted scientists to consider the gravitational influence of an unseen ninth planet as a plausible explanation. The challenge lies not only in discerning the nature of this hidden entity, but also in comprehending the intricate dance it orchestrates within the cosmic ballet of our solar system. The Asteroid Belt, located between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter, is a vast region populated by numerous irregularly shaped celestial bodies, primarily composed of rock and metal. This expanse, often portrayed in popular culture as a densely cluttered field, is in fact characterized by vast empty spaces, with the average distance between asteroids being substantial. Despite its portrayal in science fiction, the Asteroid Belt is not a navigational hazard for spacecraft. While the majority of asteroids in the belt are small and irregularly shaped, the largest among them is Ceres, which is classified as both an asteroid and a dwarf planet. Discovered in 1801 by Italian astronomer Giuseppe Piazzi, Ceres has drawn scientific interest due to its unique characteristics including a surface covered in water ice. One intriguing aspect of the asteroid belt is the Kirkwood Gaps, regions where few asteroids are found due to gravitational resonances with Jupiter. This gravitational interaction has led to the clearing of certain orbits, creating gaps in the distribution of asteroids. The Kirkwood Gaps provide valuable insights about the influence of large planets on smaller celestial bodies. 
Saturn's rings are small asteroids and rocks. Saturn's rings are not comprised of small asteroids and rocks, rather they predominantly consist of ice particles, ranging in size from tiny grains to substantial mountain-sized chunks. This icy composition distinguishes Saturn's rings from other celestial bodies, and their delicate appearance belies the substantial forces and intricate dynamics at play. Regarding the vertical structures within Saturn's rings, these intriguing features are commonly known as ring spokes. These spokes manifest as dark streaks extending above and below the average plane of the rings creating a three-dimensional aspect that contrasts with the typical flat appearance of planetary rings. Despite the visual allure of these structures, their exact origin and formation mechanisms remain partially shrouded in mystery. The prevailing theory suggests that the interactions between charged particles in Saturn's magnetosphere and the fine, icy particles in the rings is responsible for the creation of these spokes. While this explanation provides valuable insight, the precise intricacies of this interaction are not yet fully understood. This enigma surrounding the vertical structures prompts ongoing scientific exploration and analysis. The Cassini spacecraft, during its extensive exploration of the Saturnian system, captured detailed images of these ring spokes, offering a wealth of data for scientists to study. In summary, Saturn's rings consist primarily of ice particles, dispelling the notion that they are composed of small asteroids and rocks. The Man on the Moon The notion of a man on the moon has been a long-standing cultural and folkloric theme, often linked to human imagination and the interpretation of lunar surface features. This perception stems from the arrangement of dark and light areas on the moon's surface, known as lunar maria and highlands, respectively, creating patterns that some people interpret as resembling a human face or figure. This anthropomorphic interpretation is purely a product of pareidolia, where the human mind seeks familiar patterns in random stimuli. However, an intriguing aspect of the Man on the Moon concept lies in the diversity diversity of cultural interpretations throughout history. Various civilizations and cultures have woven rich narratives around the moon, attributing different meanings and mystical stories to the patterns observed on its surface. These cultural interpretations highlight the universal fascination with the moon as a celestial object and the human inclination to find meaning in the seemingly random arrangements of natural features. Moreover, the mystery surrounding the moon doesn't solely reside in cultural interpretations but extends to scientific curiosities as well. One such mystery revolves around the moon's asymmetry, the fact that the far side of the moon looks significantly different from the side visible from Earth. The exact reasons behind this asymmetry remain an open question in lunar science, with various hypotheses suggesting complex geological processes and tidal interactions with Earth. Venus is Hell The concept of Venus as Hell has been a prevailing notion in popular science and public imagination, portraying Venus as an inhospitable and extreme environment. This perception is rooted in the planet's harsh conditions, including a thick and toxic atmosphere, extreme surface temperatures, and pressure levels that are akin to being submerged deep underwater on Earth. Venus is often referred to as Earth's evil twin due to its similar size and proximity to our planet. Despite these apparent similarities, the stark differences in environmental conditions have led to the characterization of Venus as a hot style and hellish world. The surface temperature on Venus can soar to around 900 degrees Fahrenheit or 475 degrees Celsius, hotter than the surface of Mercury, the closest planet to the Sun. The thick atmosphere, mainly composed of carbon dioxide with clouds of sulfuric acid, creates a runaway greenhouse effect, trapping heat and making the surface temperature unbearable. Kuiper Belt The Kuiper Belt is a region in our solar system beyond Neptune containing a vast array of small icy bodies known as Kuiper Belt objects. These objects are remnants from the early solar system and provide valuable insights into its formation. The belt extends from about 30 to 50 astronomical units from the Sun, with one astronomical unit being the average distance from Earth to the Sun. Scientists believe that the Kuiper Belt is home to countless objects, ranging in size from a few kilometers to several hundred kilometers in diameter. Notable members include Pluto, once considered the ninth planet until reclassification in 2006. Studying these distant objects helps astronomers understand the conditions prevailing during the solar system's infancy. One intriguing aspect of the Kuiper belt is the presence of binary systems, where two objects orbit each other. This phenomenon has puzzled scientists as it challenges conventional models of solar system formation. Some theories propose that gravitational interactions or collisions between the Kuiper belt objects could be responsible for creating these binary pairs. Uranus jokes Uranus jokes have made their mark in pop culture, becoming a source of amusement across various mediums. Television shows, movies and even cartoons often incorporate playful references to the planet's name, leveraging the phonetic similarity to Uranus. One notable instance is in the animated TV series The Simpsons. The character Bart Simpson, known for his mischievous humor, once made a wisecrack involving Uranus. This moment exemplifies how popular culture embraces the comedic potential of wordplay associated with the planet's name. Additionally, stand 
stand-up comedians and late-night talk show hosts frequently utilize Uranus jokes in their routines. The inherent comedic value of the name provides a reliable source of laughter for audiences, making it a recurring theme in the realm of comedy. Beyond that, Uranus jokes often surface in internet memes, social media and everyday conversations contributing to the widespread recognition of the playful association with the planet's name. This humorous take on Uranus has become a part of the cultural lexicon, demonstrating how language and science can intersect in amusing ways. The European Space Agency is an intergovernmental organization dedicated to the exploration of space. Established in 1975, ESA currently comprises 22 member states, collaborating on various space missions and programs. Its primary objectives include advancing space research, promoting international cooperation, and fostering of the development of space-related technologies. ESA operates a range of missions, encompassing Earth observation, planetary exploration, and human space flight. Notable projects include the Hubble Space Telescope, the Mars Express mission, and the Rosetta spacecraft that successfully landed the Philae probe on a comet. An intriguing aspect of ESA's endeavors is its engagement in cosmic mysteries. The agency actively participates in missions seeking to unravel the enigmatic nature of dark matter and dark energy, two elusive components that constitute the majority of the universe. Despite extensive research, these cosmic entities continue to defy full comprehension, adding an element of intrigue to ESA's cosmic pursuits. Roscosmos, or the Russian Federal Space Agency, emerged in 1992 to oversee Russia's space endeavors, inheriting a legacy from the Soviet space program. With pivotal achievements like launching Sputnik 1 and sending Yuri Gagarin into space, Roscosmos has etched its mark in space exploration history. Intriguingly, Roscosmos maintains a unique blend of formality and camaraderie in the global space community. Despite geopolitical complexities, the agency fosters international partnerships, notably contributing to the International Space Station. This collaborative ethos distinguishes Roscosmos as a bridge between nations in the pursuit of scientific knowledge. Space probes are unmanned spacecraft designed for exploration and data collection beyond Earth's atmosphere. These robotic emissaries serve various purposes, from studying distant celestial bodies to investigating the conditions of outer space. One notable space probe is Voyager 1, launched by NASA in 1977. Its primary mission was to study the outer planets, but it exceeded expectations by continuing its journey beyond our solar system. Voyager 1 is now the farthest human-made object from Earth, venturing into interstellar space. An intriguing detail about space probes is the Pioneer Anomaly. In the 1970s, the Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11 probes exhibited an unexpected deviation in their trajectories as they moved away from the Sun. Scientists proposed various theories to explain this anomaly, including thermal radiation and systematic errors. Despite extensive analysis, the precise cause remains a tantalizing mystery, sparking scientific curiosity. Having covered the entries of Tier 2, let's segue into the Tier 3 entries, starting off with the Great Dark Spot. The Great Dark Spot, which is an immense storm discovered on Neptune by the Voyager 2 spacecraft in 1989, remains a subject of intense fascination in planetary science. Comparable in some ways to Jupiter's Great Red Spot, this colossal atmospheric disturbance is located in Neptune's southern hemisphere and is recognized for its vast size and powerful winds. Measuring thousands of kilometers in diameter, the Great Dark Spot is a massive anticyclonic storm, distinguished by winds that can reach staggering speeds speeds of up to 1500 miles per hour. What makes the storm particularly intriguing is its distinct darkness, a feature that has perplexed scientists since its initial observation. The exact origin of this darkness is not fully understood, with a hypothesis suggesting the presence of complex organic molecules or compounds in Neptune's atmosphere. Despite advances in observational techniques, the precise nature of the particles responsible for this enigmatic shadow remains an open question. Unlike Jupiter's Great Red Spot, which maintains a relatively constant appearance, Neptune's storm exhibits variability in size and at times disappears altogether. Scientists have observed changes in the Great Dark Spot's size and intensity, and the reasons behind these fluctuations remain incompletely understood. Red Giant Phase During the Red Giant Phase, a star undergoes a transformative stage in its life cycle, characterized by the expansion of its outer layers. This astronomical phenomenon occurs as a result of the depletion of hydrogen fuel in the star's core, leading to a gravitational collapse and subsequent fusion reactions in the outer shell. The star swells in size, becoming a red giant, and exhibits increased luminosity. As the star expands, it engulfs nearby planets and celestial bodies in its fiery embrace. This expansion is driven by the balance between the gravitational forces pulling matter inward and the pressure from the nuclear reactions pushing it outward. The star sheds its outer layers into space, creating a vibrant shell of ionized gas known as the planetary nebula. One intriguing aspect of the red giant phase is the impact on any orbiting planets. As the star expands, it can significantly alter the habitability of its surrounding planets. Those once located within the star's habitable zone may be pushed farther away, potentially affecting the conditions necessary for life as we know it. Conversely, outer planets may experience an increase in temperature, altering their atmospheres and surface conditions. Moreover, 
Moreover, the expelled layers of the Red Giant contribute to the enrichment of the interstellar medium with heavy elements, synthesized in the star's core. This process plays a crucial role in the formation of future generations of stars and planetary systems, as the enriched material serves as the building blocks for new cosmic structures. Scientists continue to explore the intricacies of the mass loss mechanisms during the stage and the exact factors that determine the fate of the star and its surrounding planetary system. Theia, named after the mythical Greek Titaness, who was said to be the mother of the moon, this hypothetical planetary object is believed to have had a monumental impact on our planet quite literally. Around 4.5 billion years ago, during the late heavy bombardment phase of the solar system's formation, Earth collided with Theia in a colossal cosmic event. The impact was so colossal that it led to the creation of the moon. This theory, known as the giant impact hypothesis, is widely accepted by the scientific community. The debris resulting from this collision eventually coalesced to form the moon, a celestial companion that has intrigued humanity for centuries. What adds an air of mystery to Theia's story is that we have limited direct evidence of its existence. Unlike other celestial bodies, Theia itself has not been discovered. Instead, scientists have pieced together this cosmic puzzle through a combination of computer simulations, isotopic analysis of lunar rocks, and geophysical models. The collision with Theia had profound consequences for Earth. It not only created the Moon, but also influenced the planet's axial tilt and rotation. These factors, in turn, played a crucial role in shaping Earth's climate, seasons, and the development of life. Io's Vulcanism. Alright, buckle up for a cosmic roller coaster, because Io, one of Jupiter's moons, is a hotbed of volcanic activity that's both fascinating and a bit mysterious. Picture this you've got over 400 active volcanoes on a moon roughly the size of our own. Now, that's some serious geological flare. So, what's causing this volcanic frenzy on Io? Well, it's all about gravitational tug of war. Jupiter, being the massive gas giant it is, doesn't shy away from flexing its gravitational muscles. This gravitational interaction with its moon Io creates tidal forces that would make any celestial body squirm. These forces stretch and compress Io, heating up its interior like a cosmic pressure cooker. This intense internal heat leads to the volcanic eruptions that paint the moon with vibrant splatters of molten material. Now, here's where it gets even more intriguing. The unexplained twist in Io's volcanic tail involves the elusive mechanism behind the eruption timings. While we've got a general grasp on the tidal heating concept, the specific triggers for individual eruptions remain a cosmic head scratcher. It's like Io has its own rhythm, and we're still trying to figure out the beat. Io's volcanoes spew out a mixture of sulfur and silicate rock, creating a surreal landscape that's both beautiful and alien. The plumes from these eruptions can reach staggering heights, some even surpassing the tallest volcanoes on Earth. Imagine standing on the surface witnessing the celestial fireworks display. Talk about a front row seat to the cosmic spectacle. Jupiter's Rings Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system, possesses a captivating feature often overshadowed by its iconic great red spot and massive size its intricate ring system. Unlike the prominent rings of Saturn, Jupiter's rings are relatively faint and composed of small dark particles. These rings were first discovered in 1979 by the Voyager 1 spacecraft, and subsequent observations have revealed a complex structure consisting of several main components. The main ring, known as the halo ring, is a broad and faint band of particles encircling Jupiter at a distance of about 92,000 kilometers from the planet's center. This ring is primarily composed of microscopic dust particles that are likely ejected from Jupiter's smaller inner moons, such as Amalthea and Thebe. Due to micro meteoroid impacts. One of the notable features within Jupiter's ring system is the presence of an intriguing, unexplained phenomenon referred to as waves. These waves are spiral patterns observed within the ring material and are believed to be caused by gravitational interactions with Jupiter's small inner moons. The exact mechanism driving the formation of these waves, however, remains a puzzle for scientists. Some propose that resonances with the moon's orbits induce these patterns, while others suggest that the irregular distribution of dust within the rings contributes to their appearance. While scientists have made significant strides in understanding Understanding the composition and dynamics of Jupiter's rings, the mystery surrounding the origin of the waves underscores the complexity of planetary ring systems. Pluto stands, enthusiasts who ardently support the idea of Pluto being reinstated as the ninth planet in our solar system, have formed a unique and passionate community. While the scientific community officially reclassified Pluto as a dwarf planet in 2006, this decision sparked a wave of discontent among some individuals who continue to advocate for its planetary status. The discourse surrounding Pluto's stance is characterized by a blend of scientific curiosity and nostalgic attachment to the notion of the classical nine-planet lineup. Formal discussions within the astronomical community revolve around the international astronomical Astronomical Union's criteria for planetary classification, emphasizing an object's ability to clear its orbital path. However, Pluto's stands often inject a casual vibe into their conversations, blending scientific arguments with humor and memes. This amalgamation of formality and informality creates a distinctive atmosphere within the Pluto's stand community. 
Mimas is the Death Star. Mimas, a moon of Saturn, has earned the moniker Death Star due to its remarkable resemblance to the iconic space station from the Star Wars franchise. This celestial body with a diameter of approximately 396 kilometers features a distinctive crater named Herschel, which occupies a significant portion of its surface and contributes to its striking resemblance to the Death Star. The impact that created this enormous crater is believed to have been nearly catastrophic for Mimas, and the moon's subsequent survival and the formation of Herschel make it a fascinating object of study. Formally designated Saturn 1, Mimas orbits its parent planet at a distance of approximately 185,000 kilometers, exhibiting a synchronous rotation that keeps one face permanently pointed towards Saturn. This orbital proximity and synchronous rotation contribute to the Moon's intriguing geophysical features. The Herschel crater, measuring about 130 kilometers in diameter, is a result of a colossal impact that occurred in Mimas's distant past. The impact was so intense that it created a distant central peak within the crater, adding complexity to Mimas's topography. The impact that formed Herschel is thought to have come close to shattering Mimas, and understanding how the Moon endured such a catastrophic event adds to the broader knowledge of celestial bodies and their resilience. Beyond its Death Star fame, thermal anomalies detected on its surface have puzzled scientists, raising questions about the Moon's internal processes and the potential presence of subsurface structures influencing its thermal characteristics. Olympus Mons, the largest volcano in our solar system, stands as a colossal testament to the geological wonders of Mars. This shield volcano, towering at a height of approximately 22 kilometers, dwarfs Earth's tallest volcano, Mauna Kea, situated on the Tharsis volcanic plateau. Olympus Mons dominates the Martian landscape with its expansive caldera and gently sloping flanks. Formed by the eruption of low-viscosity basaltic lava over an extended period, Olympus Mons boasts a size and scale unparalleled in our cosmic neighborhood. Its sheer enormity raises questions about the geological processes that shaped it and the volcanic activity that sustained its growth. The shield-like profile of Olympus Mons suggests a slow, effusive style of eruption, in stark contrast to the more explosive nature of some earthly volcanoes. While it is generally understood that volcanic activity played a crucial role, the specifics of how Olympus Mons reached its staggering dimensions and whether it is still active remain elusive. Recent observations have revealed puzzling patterns in the distribution of small radial channels on the flanks of Olympus Mons. These features reminiscent of rootless cones found on Earth, suggests the possibility of past interactions between lava and water or ice. The presence of these channels adds an element of mystery to the volcano's history, raising questions about Mars's ancient climate and the role of volatile substances in shaping its surface. Jupiter protects Earth. The notion that Jupiter serves as a protection guardian for Earth against potential cosmic threats has gained significant attention in the realm of astrophysics. The notion that Jupiter serves as a protective guardian for Earth against potential cosmic threats has gained significant attention in the realm of astrophysics. This gas giant, with its immense size and strong gravitational influence, is often considered a celestial shield that plays a crucial role in shielding the inner solar system, including Earth, from potentially hazardous objects like comets and asteroids. Jupiter's protective role stems from its gravitational prowess, acting as a gravitational vacuum cleaner due to its immense size. The planet's gravitational pull significantly alters the trajectories of incoming celestial bodies, redirecting them away from the inner solar system. This phenomenon has led scientists to propose the idea that Jupiter serves as a sort of cosmic shield, reducing the likelihood of catastrophic collisions between Earth and wandering space debris. Furthermore, Jupiter's massive presence acts as a stabilizing force within the solar system. Its gravitational interaction with other planets contribute to maintaining the overall stability of the planetary orbits, preventing chaotic disturbances that could potentially lead to increased risks of impact on Earth. In this sense, Jupiter functions not only as a shield against external threats, but also as a cosmic stabilizer that helps maintain the delicate balance of our solar system. Solar flares, intense bursts of energy and radiation originating from the Sun's surface, represent dynamic and captivating phenomena within our solar system. These eruptions are typically associated with the Sun's outer atmosphere, the corona, and are driven by complex magnetic interactions. The energy released during a solar flare can surpass that of millions of atomic bombs, making them a subject of both scientific scrutiny and public interest. Solar flares primarily arise from the Sun's magnetic activity, particularly in regions where magnetic fields become twisted and distorted. The release of magnetic energy triggers the acceleration of charged particles, primarily electrons and protons, to near relativistic speeds. As these particles travel through the solar atmosphere, they emit various forms of electromagnetic radiation, including X-rays and ultraviolet light. Categorized into different classes based on their strength, solar flares can have varying impacts on space weather and technology on Earth. Strong flares can disrupt radio communications, satellite operations and power grids. Understanding and predicting these solar events 
bands are essential for mitigating potential adverse effects on technological systems and space-based infrastructure. One intriguing aspect of solar flares lies in their unpredictability. The sudden release of magnetic energy leading to a solar flare is a complex process involving magnetic reconnection, but the exact conditions that initiate this reconnection are not entirely clear. Moreover, the solar flare process can sometimes result in another enigmatic phenomenon known as a coronal mass ejection, or CME. During a CME, massive amounts of solar material, including charged particles and magnetic fields, are expelled into space. The relationship between solar flares and CMEs is still a subject of active research, and the precise mechanisms linking these phenomena continue to elude complete comprehension. Sedna is a dwarf planet discovered in 2003 in the outer reaches of the solar system. Its surface composition consists mainly of water, methane and nitrogen isis with tholins, resembling other transient union objects. Sedna's unique features include a reddish surface, an elongated orbit and an aphelion of approximately 937 astronomical units, making it one of the most distant objects in the solar system. Its orbit takes around 11,400 years to complete, and Sedna's perihelion is at 84 astronomical units, nearly three times farther farther than Neptune. Initially considered a member of the scattered disk, some astronomers informally referred to Sedna as the first known inner Oort cloud object. The peculiarities of Sedna's orbit have sparked interest in understanding the origin and early evolution of the solar system. Discovered in 2003, Sedna was named after the Inuit goddess Sedna, reflecting its distant location. Despite some controversy over naming protocol, it was officially accepted by the International Astronomical Union. Sedna's physical characteristics include a diameter of approximately 1,000 kilometers, a reddish hue attributed to hydrocarbon sludge on its surface, and a potential subsurface ocean. Spectroscopic observations revealed the presence of water, methane, and nitrogen ices with tholins covering its surface. The origin of Sedna's unusual orbit is still debated. Some propose interactions within the Sun's birth cluster, while others suggest the capture from another star's planetary system. Its orbit has led to speculation about the existence of a distant planet beyond Neptune, often referred to as Planet 9. The debate over its orbital classification has led to suggestions like extended scattered disk objects. Sedna's upcoming perihelion in July 2076 presents a unique opportunity for study, with the potential for a flyby mission that could provide valuable insights into interstellar radiation and the solar wind's properties at its farthest extent. Venus and Earth are sisters. Venus and Earth, often referred to as sister planets, share several similarities that make them intriguing objects of study in our solar system. These terrestrial planets are comparable in size, with Venus being only slightly smaller than Earth. Both have atmospheres, weather systems and rocky surfaces, yet the differences between them raise fascinating questions for scientists. Similarities between Venus and Earth include their compositions primarily consisting of silicate rock and metal. Both planets have atmospheres predominantly composed of carbon dioxide, with traces of nitrogen and other gases. Additionally, they have undergone similar geological processes, such as volcanic activity and tectonic movements, shaping their surfaces over billions of years. However, it's the differences that make the comparison between Venus and Earth particularly intriguing. Earth enjoys a temperature climate conducive to life, while Venus experiences extreme temperatures, with surface temperatures soaring high enough to melt lead due to a runaway greenhouse effect. The thick atmosphere of Venus traps heat, creating a hostile environment. Furthermore, Earth possesses a robust magnetic field generated by its liquid iron-nickel core, which protects the planet from the solar wind. In contrast, Venus exhibits a weak magnetic field, and the exact mechanism behind this disparity remains a subject of scientific investigation. The Oort Cloud is a vast hypothetical region of icy bodies and comets that is believed to envelop the outer reaches of our solar system. Named after the Dutch astronomer Jan Oort, who first proposed its existence in 1950, the Oort Cloud is thought to be a reservoir of primitive objects that date back to the early days of the solar system. This theoretical region is situated far beyond the orbit of Pluto, extending up to 100,000 astronomical units from the Sun. The Oort Cloud is divided into two distinct regions, the outer Oort Cloud and the inner Oort Cloud, with the latter extending from about 2,000 to 5,000 astronomical units. The primary constituents of the Oort cloud are believed to be icy bodies, remnants from the early solar system that never coalesced into planets. These objects, including comets, are preserved in a deep freeze, influenced by the gravitational forces of nearby stars and the galactic tide. One of the most interesting and unexplained aspects of the Oort cloud is the origin of its objects. The current understanding is that these icy bodies were formed closer to the Sun and were subsequently scattered to the outer reaches of the solar system due to gravitational 
gravitational interactions with the giant planets such as Jupiter and Saturn. However, the precise mechanism and the dynamics behind this scattering process remains elusive. Additionally, the Oort cloud's role in supplying long-period comets to the inner solar system is a subject of ongoing investigation. When perturbed by gravitational interactions, some objects from the Oort cloud are believed to enter the inner solar system, becoming visible as comets with elongated orbits. The unpredictable nature of these comets adds a layer of mystery to the study of the Oort cloud. Although direct observation of the Oort cloud is challenging due to its vast distance from Earth, the study of comets and their trajectories provides valuable indirect insights into this enigmatic region. The International Astronomical Union, or IAU, is a prestigious organization that plays a crucial role in the field of astronomy. Founded in 1919, the IAU serves as the global authority responsible for promoting and coordinating astronomical research and education on an international scale. Its mission includes standardizing astronomical nomenclature, defining celestial coordinates and reference systems, and facilitating international collaboration in various astronomical endeavors. One of the most significant contributions of the IAU is its role in the defining the classification criteria for celestial bodies within our solar system. In 2006, the IAU introduced a new definition of a planet, which led to the reclassification of Pluto as a dwarf planet. According to the IAU definition, a celestial body must meet three criteria to be considered a planet. It must orbit the Sun, be spherical in shape and have cleared its orbit of other debris. The International Astronomical Union oversees the process of assigning official names to newly discovered celestial bodies, ensuring consistency and avoiding duplication. This includes not only planets and moons, but also features on these bodies, such as craters and mountains. The IAU often collaborates with relevant scientific communities and even invites the public to participate in certain naming processes, reflecting its commitment to inclusivity and public engagement. The IAU's general assemblies, held every three years, provide a platform for astronomers to share research findings, discuss advancements and shape the future direction of astronomical research. Now, without further ado, we're diving even deeper into Tier 4, which begins with life on Titan. Titan, Saturn's largest moon, has been a subject of scientific curiosity and exploration due to its unique characteristics. Titan is the only moon in our solar system known to have a dense atmosphere, primarily composed of nitrogen, with traces of methane and ethane. The presence of organic molecules and the possibility of liquid hydrocarbons on its surface make Titan an intriguing target for the search for extraterrestrial life. Despite the extreme cold on Titan with surface temperatures averaging around around minus 179 degrees Celsius, scientists speculate that certain adaptations could enable life to exist. One hypothesis is that life forms on Titan might utilize liquid methane or ethane as a solvent instead of water. The lakes and seas on Titan are not composed of water, but are thought to contain a mixture of hydrocarbons. One of the most captivating features of Titan is its vast seas and lakes, predominantly near its polar regions. The liquid bodies on Titan are not water, but rather ethane and methane, which exist in liquid form due to the Moon's extremely low temperatures. The Cassini spacecraft during its mission to Saturn provided evidence of these liquid bodies on Titan's surface, and subsequent observations by the Huygens probe revealed the presence of dry lake beds, suggesting the periodic presence of liquid. An unexplained and fascinating aspect of Titan is the source of its methane. The replenishment of methane in the atmosphere is not entirely understood. Methane is broken down by sunlight over time, so there must be a mechanism for continuously resupplying it. Some hypotheses suggest geological processes or cryovolcanism might be involved, but the exact source remains uncertain. Additionally, the possibility of exotic forms of life, such as organisms with biochemistries different from those on Earth, adds to the intrigue. Titan's environment, with its complex chemistry and diverse landscapes, presents an opportunity for astrobiologists to explore the potential for life beyond Earth in ways that challenge traditional assumptions about habitability. Eris is a planet if Pluto is too. Eris is a distant trans-Neptunian object gained prominence in the ongoing debate about the classification of celestial bodies in our solar system, particularly in relation to the status of Pluto. Discovered in 2005 by astronomers using the Palomar Observatory, Eris is slightly smaller than Pluto, but more massive, making it one of the largest known dwarf planets. After changing the definition for a planet in 2006 by the International Astronomical Union, Pluto, once considered the ninth planet, no longer met the criteria due to its interactions with other objects in the Kuiper Belt. This reclassification demoted Pluto to the status of a dwarf planet. Eris played a pivotal role in this re-evaluation. Its discovery, along with other trans-Neptunian objects like Haumea and Makimaki, challenged the traditional classifications of planets. Eris is slightly smaller size than Pluto, but greater mass presented a conundrum. If Pluto was no longer considered a planet, should Eris be included in the planetary club? The debate about Eris and Pluto highlighted the evolving nature of our understanding of the solar system. 
system. It raised questions about the definition of a planet and whether size alone should be the determining factor. Some scientists and enthusiasts argue that if Pluto deserved planetary status, then Eris should too, potentially leading to an expansion of the list of recognized planets. Valles Marineris, often referred to as the Grand Canyon of Mars, is an immense canyon system on the surface of the Red Planet. Named after NASA's Mariner 9 spacecraft, which first captured detailed images of the feature in 1971, Valles Marineris is one of the largest canyons in the solar system. This extraordinary geological formation stretches for about 4,000 kilometers, making it roughly 10 times longer than the Grand Canyon on Earth. Situated along the Martian equator, Valles Marineris is a complex network of canyons, troughs and valleys, with depths reaching up to 7 kilometers and widths spanning as much as 200 kilometers. The canyon system is so extensive that it could easily stretch across the entire United States. Its geological features include landslides, fault systems and a variety of rock formations that provide valuable insights into Mars's geological history. The formation of Valles Marineris is believed to be linked to the planet's tectonic activity and the stretching and cracking of the Martian crust. Scientists speculate that the initial fractures may have been caused by the separation of the Tharsis volcanic plateau and the rise of the enormous shield volcanoes in the region. Over time, the canyons expanded through various geological processes, including erosion and collapse. One intriguing aspect of Valles Marineris is its potential connection to Mars's ancient hydrological history. Some scientists hypothesize that the canyon system may have played a role in channeling water, possibly from melting ice or subsurface aquifers, creating a network of river-like channels on the Martian surface. They Investigation of these potential ancient water pathways is crucial in understanding Mars's past climate and its potential to support life. The fifth giant, a speculative celestial body, is proposed to have once existed in the space between Saturn and Neptune during the early stages of the solar system's formation. The theory posits that the distant positions of Uranus, Neptune and this hypothetical fifth giant were influenced by a sequence of planetary migrations. Around 4.5 billion years ago, the rocky core of the fifth giant, like Uranus and Neptune, is believed to have formed from a dense aggregation of rocky and gaseous materials. The core's massive gravity subsequently attracted more gas and particles from the surrounding vacuum, transforming it into a Jovian ice giant. The migration of Neptune, occurring approximately 4.5 billion years ago, played a crucial role in the fate of the fifth giant. As Neptune migrated outward, it eventually approached Saturn, getting too close due to the gravitational influences of Jupiter and Saturn. This interaction, primarily driven by Jupiter, led to the ejection of the fifth giant from the solar system around 4 billion years ago. The fifth giant's lack of a stable orbit made it susceptible to the gravitational forces of Jupiter and Saturn resulting in its expulsion from the solar system. The absence of direct contact with human technology or observational evidence has left scientists uncertain about the exact composition of the fifth giant. Theoretical models propose that the fifth giant likely shares a similar elemental makeup with Uranus and Neptune, including hydrogen, helium, methane, ammonia, rock and traces of ice and water. Despite its hypothetical existence, the fifth giant has not been discovered or detected, prompting various theories about its fate. Speculations range from the fifth giant being captured by a nearby star system and becoming an exoplanet, potentially already discovered, to the possibility of it being a rogue planet. Another intriguing theory suggests that the fifth giant may not have been entirely ejected, but could be in a distant orbit, potentially aligning with the concept of the elusive planet 9. Enceladus's water volcanoes. Enceladus, one of Saturn's intriguing moons, has captivated scientists with its remarkable features, most notably its water volcanoes. Discovered by the Cassini spacecraft during its mission, Enceladus exhibits geysers erupting from its southern polar region, revealing the existence of a subsurface ocean beneath its icy crust. The water volcanoes on Enceladus are primarily located at the moon's south pole, where prominent fractures called tiger stripes release plumes of water vapor, icy particles and organic compounds into space. These eruptions are believed to originate from a global subsurface ocean, making Enceladus one of the few celestial bodies in our solar system with liquid water beyond Earth. The Cassini spacecraft provided valuable data on these water plumes, enabling scientists to analyze their composition. The ejected material contains water ice, salt, silica and traces of organic compounds, indicating a dynamic interaction between the Moon's subsurface ocean and its icy crust. The presence of organic molecules raises intriguing questions about the potential habitability of Enceladus. 
One of the mysteries surrounding Enceladus is the heat source driving these water volcanoes. The gravitational interactions between Enceladus, Saturn and other moons contribute to tidal forces that generate heat within the moon, maintaining the liquid ocean beneath the icy surface. However, the extent of this heat source and the specific mechanisms driving the eruptions remain subjects of ongoing research. The water plumes offer a unique opportunity for scientific exploration. During its mission, Cassini conducted flybys through these plumes, allowing instruments to directly sample and analyze their composition. The detection of organic compounds in the plumes adds an extra layer of intrigue, prompting scientists to consider the potential habitability of subsurface oceans on icy moons. The Martian Canals, a term popularized in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, refers to a series of long straight lines observed on the surface of Mars. The concept of these canals was championed by Italian astronomer Giovanni Schiaparelli and later expanded upon by American astronomer Percival Lowell. Their observations, however, sparked both fascination and controversy. Schiaparelli's initial observations made in the late 19th century described linear features on Mars that he referred to as canali, meaning channels in Italian. However, the term was mistranslated into English as canals, suggesting artificial construction rather than natural geological features. Percival Lowell, influenced by Schiaparelli's work, dedicated much of his career to studying Mars. Lowell's detailed drawings and maps depicted an intricate network of canals, suggesting a sophisticated irrigation system. He theorized that intelligent beings facing a water crisis on the arid planet had constructed these canals to transport water from the polar ice caps to the equatorial regions. The idea of Martian canals captured the public's imagination, leading to a widespread speculation about potential life on Mars. However, advancements in telescope technology and later space missions debunked the notion of artificial canals. In the mid-20th century, spacecraft like Mariner and Viking provided close-up images of Mars, revealing a starkly different reality. The canals depicted by Schiaparelli and Lowell were not present and the surface showed a more rugged, natural landscape. The apparent canals were likely optical illusions, misinterpretations of Martian features or even artifacts of the telescopes used. The face on Mars is a prominent geological feature located in the Cydonia region of the Red Planet. Capturing public fascination and sparking intense speculation, this formation gained attention due to its resemblance to a human face. The controversy surrounding this structure is emblematic of the human tendency to anthropomorphize and seek familiar patterns in unfamiliar terrain. The imagery that fueled the speculation was initially captured by NASA's Viking 1 orbiter in 1976. The photograph, taken at a specific angle and lighting conditions, depicted a mass with a distinct facial resemblance, complete with eyes, nose and mouth-like features. The public's imagination ran wild, giving a rise to theories of extraterrestrial civilizations and ancient Martian civilizations. High-resolution images from orbiters like Mars Global Surveyor and Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter revealed that the face was in fact an eroded mesa with a natural origin. The interesting aspect of the face on Mars lies in the psychological phenomenon known as the pareidolia, where humans perceive familiar patterns, such as faces, in random or ambiguous stimuli. This tendency is deeply ingrained in human cognition, as recognizing faces is crucial for social interaction. The Martian landscape, with its rocky formations and shadows, provided the perfect canvas for this phenomenon. The Sun was created by a supernova. This hypothesis posits that the birth of our Sun was intricately connected to the explosive death of a massive star in a supernova event. While it may seem counterintuitive that the birth of a new star is linked to the demise of another, the complex dynamics of stellar nurseries provide insights into this cosmic connection. According to this hypothesis, the Sun's formation began within a large molecular cloud, a region of space densely packed with gas and dust. The trigger for the Sun's birth was likely a nearby supernova explosion. The shock wave generated by the supernova compressed the surrounding gas and dust, initiating the gravitational collapse that eventually led to the formation of the solar nebula, the precursor to our solar system. The remnants of the supernova, enriched with heavy elements, forged in the stellar explosion, seeded the surrounding molecular cloud with a mix of elements crucial for planetary formation. These elements include metals like iron, nickel and others that formed the building blocks of rocky planets. The shock wave also initiated the rotation of the molecular cloud, causing it to flatten into to a spinning disk. While the Sun's connection to a supernova is a compelling narrative, it's important to note that unraveling the precise details of our solar system's formation involves ongoing research and exploration. Studying other star-forming regions, supernovae, and the chemical fingerprints within our solar system provide scientists with clues about the cosmic events that shaped the birth of the Sun and the planets. 
sunspots, enigmatic phenomena on the solar surface offer a fascinating window into the dynamic nature of our Sun. These dark, cooler regions emerge due to the Sun's complex magnetic activity. Unlike the surrounding areas, sunspots manifest as temporary depressions in temperature caused by intense magnetic fields inhibiting the convective transfer of heat. Observing sunspots over time reveals a remarkable pattern known as the solar butterfly diagram. Picture this diagram as a visual chronicle of sunspot emergence and migration across the solar surface. Initially, sunspots appear at higher latitudes and progressively drift toward the solar equator, akin to the graceful flutter of a butterfly's wings. The cycle repeats approximately every 11 years, encapsulating the sun's magnetic activity cycle. This mesmerizing phenomenon unfolds due to the sun's differential rotation. At the equator, the sun rotates more swiftly than at the poles. The magnetic field lines twisted by this rotation become stressed and eventually give rise to sunspots. As the solar cycle advances, the spots traverse toward the equator, completing their migratory journey. Understanding the solar butterfly diagram requires acknowledging the sunspot cycle's two main phases – solar maximum and solar minimum. Solar maximum witnesses heightened sunspot activity, with numerous spots clustered near the equator. Conversely, during solar minimum, the sun exhibits a quieter phase with fewer sunspots, often concentrated at higher latitudes. Scientists utilize the solar butterfly diagram not only for its aesthetic allure, but as a valuable tool for predicting solar activity. By scrutinizing the diagram's patterns, researchers can anticipate the onset of solar maximums and minimums, aiding in space weather forecasting. This predictive capability holds significance for Earth as solar activity profoundly influences our planet's geomagnetic environment. Mars will destroy Phobos. In the enigmatic dance of celestial bodies, the gravitational tango between Mars and its moon Phobos has long intrigued astronomers. The hypothesis that Mars will eventually spell doom for Phobos is not a novel revelation, yet the intricacies of this cosmic demise remain captivating. Phobos, a diminutive moon with a mere 22.2 km diameter, hovers tantalizingly close to the red planet, dwelling within the confines of its Roche limit, the critical distance at which tidal forces become sufficiently strong to disintegrate a celestial body. The gravitational forces at play in this cosmic ballet are relentless. Mars, being the larger partner, exerts tidal forces that inexorably draw Phobos closer. Current estimations suggest that within the next 30 to 50 million years, this gravitational embrace will escalate into a cataclysmic conclusion. Phobos will approach the Roche limit, succumbing to the relentless tidal forces ultimately disintegrated into a cosmic cascade of debris. The remnants of this moon will be strewn across Mars, forming a captivating ring system, a trans and embellishment to the Martian sky. Planets aren't perfect spheres. Well, when we gaze at the night sky, the celestial bodies may seem flawlessly round, but in reality, most planets deviate from the idealized spherical shape. The primary culprit behind this imperfection is the rotation of a planet on its axis. This rotation generates a centrifugal force that causes the equator to slightly bulge outward. As a result, planets adopt a more oblate spheroid shape resembling a slightly flattened sphere. Earth, for instance, is not a perfect sphere. Its rotation causes a subtle equatorial bulge, making it more elliptical. The difference between the polar and equatorial diameters might seem minuscule, but it has profound implications. This flattened shape affects gravity, which is stronger at the poles than at the equator. Moreover, various factors contribute to the irregular shapes of other planets. Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system, spins rapidly, causing it to be noticeably oblate. Saturn experiences a similar flattening effect due to its rapid rotation. Interestingly, the extent of deviation from a perfect sphere varies among planets. Mercury, for example, has a more spherical shape because of its slow rotation. Venus, on the other hand, rotates slowly in the opposite direction, resulting in an almost perfect sphere. Beyond our solar system, astronomers have discovered exoplanets with even more peculiar shapes. Some are stretched into oblong forms due to the gravitational influence of nearby celestial bodies or the intense tidal forces they experience. In conclusion, the notion of planets as perfect spheres is a delightful oversimplification. The dynamic interplay of rotation, gravity and other celestial forces shapes these heavenly bodies into unique and intriguing forms. Europa's Ocean Let's explore the enigmatic world of Europa, one of Jupiter's moons and its captivating subsurface ocean. Beneath its icy exterior, Europa harbors a vast ocean, making it one of the most promising locations in our solar system to search for extraterrestrial life. Europa's icy shell, estimated to be several kilometers thick, covers a global ocean believed to contain more than twice the amount of water found on Earth. The existence of this subsurface ocean is supported by observations of surface features such as cracks and ridges, suggesting a dynamic 
and evolving environment beneath the ice. What adds to the intrigue is the potential for Europa's ocean to be habitable. The moon's ocean floor interacts with its rocky mantle, potentially producing the necessary chemical ingredients for life. The possibility of hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor further raises hopes of finding microbial life in this extreme environment, similar to Earth's deep sea ecosystems. One of the mysteries surrounding Europa's ocean is its exact composition and characteristics. Scientists are eager to understand the ocean's depth, salinity and the presence of key elements that could support life. Upcoming missions like NASA's Europa Clipper aim to explore these questions by studying the moon's surface and analyzing material ejected from its interior. Another puzzling aspect is the potential for complex organic molecules in Europa's ocean. The moon receives constant radiation from Jupiter, which could drive chemical reactions in the subsurface ocean, forming organic compounds. Detecting and characterizing these molecules would provide valuable insights into the moon's potential for hosting life. The Cassini Division Nestled within the expansive rings of Saturn, the Cassini Division stands as a prominent feature, a gap that slices through the A-ring, the outermost of the main rings. Named after the Italian-French astronomer Giovanni Domenico Cassini, who first observed it in 1675, this division is approximately 4800 kilometers wide. It acts as a celestial chasm, separating the A-ring into two distinct parts, the outer A-ring and the inner A-ring. The Cassini Division's formation is primarily attributed to gravitational interactions with Saturn Saturn's moon Mimas. This gravitational resonance between Mimas and the ring particles creates a dynamic equilibrium, preventing the particles from closing the gap. Essentially, Mimas's gravitational influence serves as a cosmic shepherd, maintaining order within the ring structure. What makes the Cassini division even more intriguing is its sharp boundary and well-defined edges. The clarity of this division has perplexed scientists challenging conventional expectations. Normally, in a dynamic and chaotic environment like the Saturnian ring system, one would anticipate more diffuse boundaries. Certain aspects of the Cassini division remain enigmatic. One puzzling aspect in the presence of what scientists refer to as spokes dark radial features within the rings that appear and disappear over time. While their formation is believed to be linked to the interaction between the ring particles and Saturn's magnetic field, the precise mechanisms behind their appearance and disappearance continue to elude a comprehensive explanation. Life on Venus In the realm of potential extraterrestrial life, Venus, Earth's closest planetary neighbor, has long been viewed as inhospitable. However, recent scientific investigations have sparked a re-evaluation of this perception, with tantalizing hints suggesting the possibility of life in Venus's atmosphere. While the planet's surface is a scorching hellscape with temperatures exceeding 450 degrees Celsius or 842 degrees Fahrenheit and crushing atmospheric pressures, the upper layers of Venus's atmosphere present a different story. In September of 2020, scientists detected the presence of phosphine gas in the Venusian clouds, a compound that on Earth is often associated with microbial life. This revelation ignited a scientific fervor, prompting researchers to contemplate the prospect of microbial organisms existing in the temperate zones of Venus's atmosphere, where conditions are less extreme. One hypothesis proposes that airborne microbes, thriving in the relatively milder temperatures and pressures of the cloud layers, could be responsible for the observed phosphine. The exact mechanisms of how life, if it exists, could endure the harsh conditions of Venus remain speculative. The intriguing aspect of this potential discovery lies in its defiance of conventional expectations. Previously dismissed as a planetary inferno devoid of life, Venus now emerges as a celestial body with uncharted possibilities. The mystery deepens as scientists grapple with questions about the nature of any potential life forms, their adaptations and the fundamental principles that govern life beyond Earth. Haumea is an egg. Haumea, a distant dwarf planet located in the Kuiper Belt, has intrigued astronomers not only for its unique characteristics, but also due to a peculiar hypothesis that it may be shaped like an elongated egg. Discovered in 2004 by a team led by Mike Brown, Haumea is one of the five officially recognized dwarf planets in our solar system. What sets Haumea apart is its unconventional shape, believed to result from its rapid rotation, completing a full turn in just about four hours. Haumea is named after the Hawaiian goddess of fertility and childbirth, and not to its egg-like shape and its two known moons. Hayaka and Namaka, named after Hawaiian goddesses as well. The prevailing theory suggests that Haumea's rotation is so rapid that it has caused the planet to flatten at its poles and extend along its equator, creating this unusual shape. Adding to Haumea's mystique is the presence of a thin, ring-like structure around it. The ring was discovered in 2017 during a stellar occultation, a phenomenon where light from a distant star is blocked by an object passing in front of it. This unexpected finding has puzzled scientists as the formation of rings around dwarf planets is not a common occurrence. The origin and composition of Haumea's ring remain subjects of ongoing research. 
Alright, it's time for us to dive even deeper. The tier 5 starts off with the Ceres used to be a planet entry. Ceres, the largest object in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, has a rich history in the exploration of our solar system. Once considered a planet, its classification has evolved over time, shedding light on its unique characteristics and compelling mysteries. In the early 19th century, astronomers observed Ceres as a point of light in the night sky, much like other planets. In 1801, Italian astronomer Giuseppe Piazzi discovered Ceres, considering it the missing planet between Mars and Jupiter. Initially labeled as the eighth planet, subsequent observations of other small bodies in the same region led to the realization that Ceres was part of a vast population of objects residing in the asteroid belt. Consequently, in the mid-19th century, Ceres lost its planetary status and was reclassified as an asteroid. Ganymede the largest moon of Jupiter and the largest moon in our solar system is an intriguing celestial body that has captivated the attention of scientists and astronomers. One of the most fascinating aspects of Ganymede is the presence of a subsurface ocean beneath its icy crust, making it a unique and potentially habitable world. The subsurface ocean on Ganymede is believed to lie about 150 kilometers beneath its icy surface. This ocean is not a mere hypothesis, it is supported by data collected by NASA's Galileo spacecraft, which conducted a thorough exploration of Jupiter and and its moons in the 1990s. The evidence suggests that Ganymede's ocean is buried beneath a thick layer of ice, possibly with a depth of tens of kilometers. Scientists theorized that the subsurface ocean on Ganymede is kept in a liquid state due to the moon's internal heat generated by the process of tidal flexing. Ganymede experiences gravitational interactions with Jupiter and other nearby moons, causing its interior to flex and heat up. This tidal heating is believed to maintain the liquid nature of the subsurface ocean, potentially creating an environment suitable for life as we know it. The Great Red Spot is getting smaller. The Great Red Spot on Jupiter has been a prominent and enduring feature of the planet's atmosphere. However, observations over the past few years have suggested that the Great Red Spot is shrinking and scientists are actively monitoring this phenomenon to understand the implications for Jupiter's atmospheric dynamics. The Great Red Spot, a massive storm system on Jupiter, has been observed since the 17th century, making it one of the longest studied features in the solar system. Historically, the storm was estimated to be about three times the diameter of Earth. Recent observations, though, indicate that the Great Red Spot has been contracting over time. The exact reasons behind this reduction in size are not fully understood, but it is believed to be related to complex interactions within Jupiter's turbulent atmosphere. One interesting detail of the Great Red Spot shrinking is the potential impact on Jupiter's overall climate and atmospheric circulation. The storm has played a significant role in shaping the planet's weather patterns and changes in its size could influence the dynamics of Jupiter's atmosphere. Scientists are keen to investigate whether the shrinking of the Great Red Spot is a temporary phenomenon or part of a longer-term trend, as this information could provide valuable insights into the atmospheric processes at play on the gas giant. Pluto and Charon are a binary system. Pluto and its largest moon, Charon, form a captivating binary system within our solar system. This dwarf planet and its moon share a unique gravitational dance as they are tidally locked, meaning that they always show the same face to each other as they orbit a common center of mass. This binary nature sets them apart from other planets and their moons. Charon, discovered in 1978, is relatively large compared to Pluto in comparison to other moon-planet ratios in the solar system. The gravitational interaction between Pluto Pluto and Charon is so strong that they orbit each other, creating a barycenter or common center of mass located outside the physical boundaries of either body. New Horizons, a NASA spacecraft, conducted a historic flyby of the Pluto-Charon system in 2015, providing high-resolution images and valuable data about their composition, atmosphere and surface features. An intriguing aspect of the Pluto-Charon system is the presence of reddish terrains on Pluto and a dark reddish pole on Charon. The exact origin of these color variations remain a subject of of ongoing scientific investigation. The reddish coloring is believed to be linked to complex organic molecules possibly formed through the interaction of solar radiation with methane and nitrogen on their surfaces. Every object has at least a tiny atmosphere. The intriguing notion that every object, regardless of its size or location in the vastness of space, possesses at least a tiny atmosphere challenges our traditional understanding of celestial bodies. While we commonly associate atmosphere with large planets like Earth, recent scientific discoveries have illuminated the presence of gaseous envelopes around objects ranging from asteroids to exoplanets. Even seemingly small and distant objects such as asteroids exhibit faint atmospheres. This discovery made 
through observations and measurements, suggests that the tenuous atmospheres surrounding these celestial bodies are composed of gases released by processes like sublimation or outgassing. The realization that atmospheres, albeit minuscule, are widespread in the cosmos prompts a reevaluation of our cosmic surroundings. One fascinating example of this concept is the study of Trojans, asteroids that share the orbit of a larger planet such as Jupiter or Neptune. Those Trojans were traditionally thought to be devoid of atmospheres due to their small size and distance from the Sun. However, recent observations using powerful telescopes have revealed the presence of faint atmospheres around some of those Trojans. The exact mechanisms leading to the formation and maintenance of these atmospheres remain a subject of ongoing investigation. Life on Europa Europa, one of Jupiter's intriguing moons, has long been a focal point in the search for extraterrestrial life. This icy moon, slightly smaller than Earth's moon, is believed to harbor a subsurface ocean beneath its frozen crust, making it a prime candidate for the potential existence of life beyond our planet. As I mentioned earlier, scientists have gathered compelling evidence for the existence of this vast liquid water reservoir through observations made by the Galileo spacecraft, which conducted multiple flybys of Jupiter and its moons in the late 1990s and early 2000s. The ocean, shielded from the harsh radiation environment of space by the moon's icy crust may offer a protected and stable environment where life could thrive. The chemical composition of Europa's ocean, the presence of essential elements, and the possibility of hydrothermal vents on the seafloor further enhance its potential as a habitable zone. However, the subsurface ocean has not been directly explored, and the search for life is largely speculative at this point. Maxwell Montes, located on the planet Venus, stands as one of the most prominent and enigmatic features in our solar system. As Venus's highest mountain range, Maxwell Montes dominates the planet's landscape, rising about 11 kilometers or 7 miles above its mean surface elevation. Discovered through radar mapping conducted by the Pioneer Venus mission in the late 1970s, Maxwell Montes has since been a subject of fascination and scientific study. The intriguing aspect of Maxwell Montes lies not only in its impressive height, but but also in its unusual topography and geological features. The mountain range is characterized by complex faults and fractures, indicating a history of tectonic activity. Unlike many other mountains in the solar system, which are often formed through processes like volcanic activity, Maxwell Montes seems to have undergone a unique geological evolution. One of the most perplexing aspects of Maxwell Montes is the apparent absence of volcanic activity in its formation. Typically, large mountain ranges on terrestrial planets are associated with tectonic or volcanic processes. However, Maxwell Montes lacks clear volcanic features, leading scientists to propose alternative theories for its origin. Some researchers suggest that the mountain range may have formed through a process called lithospheric thickening, involving the gradual accumulation and buckling of Venus's crust. Pluto's heart, formerly known as Tambao Regio, is a prominent feature on the dwarf planet's surface. Captured in stunning detail by NASA's New Horizons spacecraft during its historic flyby in July of 2015, this heart-shaped region is located near Pluto's equator and is composed of two distinct regions, a bright icy plain named Sputnik Planitia and a darker model terrain known as the Cthulhu Regio. Sputnik Planitia, the left lobe of the heart, is a vast nitrogen-dominated ice field with a remarkably smooth surface. Scientists believe that the heart's appearance is the result of geological processes involving the slow churning of volatile ices such as nitrogen, carbon monoxide and methane. These ices flow and reshape the landscape over geological timescales, creating the distinctive heart shape that captured the imagination of people around the world. One intriguing aspect of the heart's formation is the apparent absence of impact craters in Sputnik Planitia. The lack of craters suggests that this region is relatively young in geological terms, as other areas on Pluto's surface show evidence of impact cratering. Additionally, the heart's composition and the mechanisms behind its formation remain intriguing puzzles for scientists. The precise interplay between volatile ices, sublimation and the possible presence of a subsurface ocean beneath Pluto's icy shell all contribute to the complexity of understanding Tambao Regio. Galileo Galilei discovered Neptune. In the early 17th century, long before Neptune's official discovery in the mid-1800s, a controversial theory suggests that Galileo Galilei might have actually observed the distant planet. Physicist David Jamieson from the University of Melbourne has delved into Galileo's notebooks, uncovering notations that challenged the traditional belief that Galileo dismissed Neptune as a mere star. Galileo, using a rudimentary telescope he crafted himself, recorded the position of a seemingly ordinary star over 
several nights in 1612 and 1613. Recent analysis indicates that this star was Neptune. Jameson proposes that Galileo may have noticed the celestial body's movement relative to other stars, a behavior consistent with planets rather than fixed stars. The discovery of Neptune itself was contentious, with predictions made by mathematicians John Couch Adams and Urban Le Verrier in the mid-1840s. German astronomer Johann Galle eventually observed Neptune on September the 23rd, 1846, using Le Verrier's predictions sparking a dispute over credit for the discovery. Jamieson's points to a mysterious black dot in Galileo's notes from January the 6th of 1613, suggesting that Galileo might have revisited earlier observations realizing Neptune's significance. The physicist proposes further analysis, including a chemical examination of the notebook to confirm whether this dot was indeed recorded on January the 28th, supporting the idea that Galileo believed he had found a new planet. The possibility of an as yet undecoded anagram or hidden clue in Galileo's writings adds another layer of intrigue. The astronomer had a habit of using anagrams to establish priority for his groundbreaking discoveries, raising the prospect that an undiscovered message might reveal his awareness of Neptune as a new celestial object. Jamieson's theory challenges historical perceptions of Neptune's discovery and invites a re-evaluation of Galileo's role in early astronomical observations. How Mass Rings In a stellar occultation observed on January the 21st, 2017, and detailed in the Nature article from October the 2017, the presence of a ring around Haumea was confirmed. This discovery marked the first ring system identified around a transneptunian object. The ring has specific characteristics, including a radius of approximately 2,300 km and a width of about 70 km. Moreover, the ring's proximity to the 1 to 3 orbit spin resonance with Haumea's rotation adds an intriguing dynamic layer to its formation. The ring is estimated to contribute 5% to the overall brightness of Haumea. A subsequent study in 2019 explored the dynamics of ring particles. They revealed that the 1 to 3 resonance with Haumea's rotation is dynamically unstable, but a stable region in the phase space aligns with the observed location of Haumea's ring. This suggests that the ring particles originate from circular, periodic orbits close to, but not inside, the resonance, providing insights into the complex and intriguing dynamics of Haumea's newly discovered ring system. Martian Cave Mars has long been a target of fascination for scientists exploring the possibility of past or present life beyond Earth. One intriguing feature that has captured the attention of researchers is the existence of potential caves or lava tubes on the Martian surface. These underground structures could offer unique insights into the planet's geological history and potential habitability. While direct evidence of Martian caves has not been confirmed, various indicators point to their existence. High-resolution images from orbiting spacecraft such as NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter reveal openings in the surface that suggest the presence of subsurface voids. These formations are thought to be lava tubes created by ancient volcanic activity. These caves could serve as protective shelters from harsh subsurface conditions, such as intense radiation and extreme temperature fluctuations, making them intriguing candidates for future exploration and potential human habitats. One particularly fascinating aspect is the possibility of these Martian caves containing evidence of past or even present microbial life. The caves may preserve geological and biological signatures that can shed light on the history of Mars and the potential for extraterrestrial life. However, technological advancements are needed to safely explore these underground structures, and the exact nature of the subsurface environment remains uncertain. Questions persist about the stability of cave structures and the feasibility of accessing them with robotic or human missions. Venus and Mars used to have life. While both Venus and Mars exhibit harsh conditions today, various geological and atmospheric clues hint at the possibility of more hospitable environments in the past. Venus, often considered Earth's sister planet due to its similar size and composition, has a contemporary atmosphere dominated by thick clouds of sulfuric acid and a runaway greenhouse effect that has led to scorching surface temperatures. However, Venusian history reveals evidence of ancient oceans and continents, suggesting a potentially habitable environment in its early days. Mars, on the other hand, exhibits geological features that suggest a more dynamic and watery past. The planet's surface showcases ancient river valleys, lake beds and sedimentary layers indicating the historical presence of liquid water. The Curiosity rover's exploration of Gale Crater uncovered evidence of ancient lake and organic molecules. One intriguing aspect is the parallel but divergent evolutionary paths of Venus and Mars. While Venus succumbed to a severe greenhouse effect and 
Mars lost its once thicker atmosphere, both transformations raise questions about the broader dynamics of planetary habitability and the potential factors influencing the emergence and sustainability of life. The Chicxulub Collision The Chicxulub impact, occurring approximately 66 million years ago, is a pivotal event in Earth's history. A massive asteroid, around 10 kilometers in diameter, collided with the Yucatan Peninsula in present-day Mexico. This cataclysmic event is widely believed to be a major contributing factor to the mass extinction that marked the end of the Cretaceous period, including the extinction of the dinosaurs. The impact unleashed an unimaginable amount of energy, equivalent to billions of atomic bombs. The collision resulted in the formation of the Chicxulub crater, which is more than 150 kilometers in diameter. The immediate aftermath of the impact caused wildfires, tsunamis and a nuclear winter effect as debris and dust ejected into the atmosphere blocked sunlight, leading to a dramatic drop in temperatures globally. One unique aspect of the Chicxulub impact is the discovery of a layer of sedimentary rock enriched with iridium, a rare metal on Earth but relatively abundant in asteroids. This iridium-rich layer, found in the geologic record, served as a crucial piece of evidence supporting the theory that an extraterrestrial impact was responsible for the mass extinction event. This discovery led to the Alvarez hypothesis, suggesting that the impact caused the extinction of dinosaurs and numerous other species. The intriguing aspect lies in the ongoing study of the Chicxulub impact's long-term effects. Researchers are investigating how such a catastrophic event influenced the evolution of life on Earth. Saturn's Blue Poles Saturn boasts a distinctive feature at its poles, a mesmerizing blue hue. The cause of this striking coloration has long puzzled scientists. Detailed observations from the Cassini spacecraft, which orbited Saturn for over 13 years until its mission ended in 2017, revealed that the planet's north and south poles exhibit a remarkable azure tint. The enigma surrounding Saturn's blue poles centers on the composition of its atmosphere and the processes that lead to the observed coloration. Unlike Earth, where a blue sky sky results from the scattering of sunlight by atmospheric molecules, Saturn's blue color appears to be unrelated to scattering. One hypothesis suggests that molecules in Saturn's upper atmosphere, possibly hydrocarbons or other organic compounds, are responsible for the distinctive blue tint. These molecules might be altered by ultraviolet light from the Sun, leading to the creation of complex organic molecules that scatter sunlight in a way that gives the poles their blue appearance. What adds an extra layer of intrigue to this phenomenon is the role of seasonal changes on Saturn. The planet experiences long and gradual seasons due to its significant axial tilt. As the seasons progress, the intensity of the blue color at the poles varies, deepening during certain periods and fading during others. Vulcan, a hypothetical planet once believed to exist within the orbit of Mercury, has a curious history in astronomy. In the 19th century, scientists observed irregularities in Mercury's orbit that couldn't be fully explained by the gravitational influences of known planets. French mathematician Urban Leverrier proposed the existence of an intermercurial planet, which he named Vulcan, as a solution to this anomaly. The search for Vulcan captured the imagination of astronomers, leading to numerous reported sightings. However, despite dedicated efforts, Vulcan remained elusive. The mystery persisted until the early 20th century when Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity provided a more accurate description of gravitational interactions. Einstein's theory successfully accounted for the peculiarities in Mercury's orbit, rendering the need for Vulcan unnecessary and effectively debunking its existence. While Vulcan turned out to be a product of an incomplete understanding of gravitational physics, its legacy endures as a testament to the ever-evolving nature of scientific knowledge. Having concluded our exploration of Tier 5, we are now delving further into the items of Tier 6, with the first one being Venus is easier to colonize than Mars. Colonizing Venus has been proposed as a potentially more viable option than Mars due to certain unique characteristics of the planet. Venus, while often considered inhospitable due to its thick atmosphere and extreme temperatures, offers advantages that could make colonization more manageable compared to Mars. The atmosphere of Venus, composed mainly of carbon dioxide with clouds of sulfuric acid, Acid, presents a substantial resource for potential colonization. Some proposed concepts involve floating habitats in the planet's upper atmosphere, where temperatures and pressures are more Earth-like. These habitats could be filled with a breathable air mixture, creating a self-contained environment for human habitation. This contrasts with Mars, where the lack of a substantial atmosphere poses challenges in terms of radiation protection and temperature regulation. Additionally, Venus is closer to Earth than Mars, making travel times shorter and potentially reducing the 
physical toll on astronauts. The shorter journey is advantageous in terms of resource allocation, minimizing the need for extended life support systems and reducing the risks associated with long-duration space travel. In conclusion, the potential for Venus colonization presents a thought-provoking alternative to Mars colonization, driven by the planet's atmosphere and proximity to Earth. Every object with ice also probably has liquid water. The notion that every object with ice also likely contains liquid water is rooted in the fundamental principles of thermodynamics and the phase diagram of water. When we consider the conditions under which ice forms, we recognize that many celestial bodies, including those in our solar system, exhibit a range of temperatures and pressures that allow for both solid and liquid water to coexist. Water's phase diagram illustrates how its state changes based on temperature and pressure. Under certain conditions, ice can exist alongside liquid water. This idea extends beyond Earth to various celestial bodies like moons, planets and even certain asteroids and comets. The examples which align with this notion are Europa and Enceladus, about which I have already talked. While the notion that ice-containing objects likely harbor liquid water is generally accepted, the detailed exploration of these environments remains a complex challenge. Upcoming missions such as NASA's Europa Clipper aim to study Europa's surface and subsurface in greater detail, potentially providing more insights into the existence and characteristics of its subsurface ocean. Everything we know about Uranus and Neptune is from Voyager 2. Much of our understanding of Uranus and Neptune stems from the Voyager 2 mission, which provided the first and only close-up observations of these distant ice giants. Launched by NASA in 1977, Voyager 2 conducted a grand tour of the outer planets, capturing invaluable data and images during its flybys of Uranus in 1986 and Neptune in 1989. The Voyager 2 spacecraft revealed crucial details about the atmospheres, compositions and magnetic fields of Uranus and Neptune. Uranus, often referred to as an ice giant, has a unique orientation. Voyager 2 detected a predominantly hydrogen and helium atmosphere on Uranus, along with traces of methane that contribute to its blue-green appearance. Neptune, a dynamic and stormy planet, displayed a distinct blue hue attributed to the presence of methane in its atmosphere. Voyager 2 observed the Great Dark Spot, a massive storm system on Neptune analogous to Jupiter's Great Red Spot. Life on Triton The possibility of life on Triton, Neptune's largest moon, is a topic that sparks scientific curiosity. Triton is an intriguing celestial body with several characteristics that make the search for life both compelling and challenging. Triton is an icy moon with a tenuous atmosphere composed mainly of nitrogen, similar to that of Pluto. One of the most intriguing features of Triton is its geysers, observed by the Voyager 2 spacecraft during its flyby in 1989. These geysers spew nitrogen gas into space, suggesting that the presence of subsurface reservoirs of volatile substances. While Triton's surface temperature hovers around minus 235 degrees Celsius or minus 391 degrees Fahrenheit, making it an inhospitable environment for Earth-like life, the possibility of subsurface oceans or liquid layers beneath the icy crust has intrigued scientists. One of the controversial aspects regarding Triton is its likely capture by Neptune's gravitational influence. Triton's retrograde orbit, opposite to the direction of Neptune's rotation, suggests that it may have been captured by the planet's gravity rather than forming an orbit around Neptune. The capture hypothesis raises questions about Triton's origin and its unique characteristics compared to other moons in the solar system. The unexplained aspect of Triton lies in its unusual surface features, including vast plains, ridges and impact craters. The diverse geological landscape suggests complex processes at play, but the exact mechanisms responsible for shaping Triton's surface remain a puzzle. In summary, Triton presents a fascinating target for astrobiological biological exploration due to the potential for subsurface oceans and the enigmatic nature of its geysers. Sixth Giant The concept of a sixth giant in the solar system has been a subject of speculation, exploration and debate in astronomical circles. While the term is not commonly associated with a specific celestial body, the hypothetical idea of an undiscovered massive planet in the outer reaches of the solar system has gained attention in recent years. One interesting aspect of the sixth giant notion is the quest for this elusive planet, often referred to as Planet 9 or Planet X. The existence of such a planet is postulated to explain certain gravitational anomalies and orbital clustering observed in the orbits of distant trans objects. Researchers propose that the massive, as yet undetected planet, several times the mass of Earth, could be influencing the orbits of these distant objects. While some astronomers argue that the observed orbital patterns of distant objects necessitate the presence of an unseen massive planet, others contend that alternative explanations, such as observational biases or the cumulative effects of numerous smaller bodies, could account for the observed phenomena. Efforts to locate the sixth giant 
and involve extensive sky surveys, often relying on large telescopes and advanced observational techniques. Despite dedicated searches, direct evidence of the sixth giant remains elusive. The search for this hypothetical planet continues to be an intriguing and dynamic field of study, with astronomers employing computational simulations and theoretical models to refine their predictions and guide observational campaigns. Saturn's rings are fading. Saturn's rings, once thought to be stable and enduring, are now displaying signs of fading, puzzling astronomers and captivating the scientific community. Observations from NASA's Cassini spacecraft, which spent 13 years studying the ring giant, revealed the gradual dimming of the iconic rings. The fading phenomenon poses a profound mystery, as these rings were previously considered to be relatively stable structures. Scientists attribute the fading to a complex interplay of factors, including the fall of micrometeoroids onto the ring particles, causing them to slowly disintegrate. Additionally, the impact of ultraviolet radiation from the Sun is thought to alter the ice particles on the ring's surfaces, contributing to their diminishing brightness. This gradual process of erosion challenges the traditional view of Saturn's rings as ancient and unchanging, raising questions about their ultimate fate. What's interesting is the variability in the rate of fading across different parts of the rings. Some regions exhibit more pronounced dimming, suggesting localized factors influencing the erosion process. Researchers are working to unravel these variations, exploring the possibility of hidden mechanisms or external influences that might be accelerating the fading in special areas. The unexplained nature of Saturn's fading rings has sparked debates among scientists with hypotheses ranging from the influence of unseen moonlets disrupting the ring particles to the impact of interstellar dust on this dynamic system. The fifth giant saved Earth hypothesis suggests that the early solar system was home to an additional gas giant, beyond the fourth known Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune, whose gravitational interactions played a crucial role in protecting Earth from potential cosmic threats. This hypothetical fifth gas giant is theorized to have influenced the orbits of other giants, particularly Jupiter, and shaped the distribution of comets and asteroids in the outer solar system. In this scenario, the presence of the fifth giant is believed to have acted as a gravitational barrier, altering the trajectories of celestial bodies and preventing them from venturing too close to the inner solar system where Earth resides. The absence of direct observational evidence for this fifth giant adds an element of intrigue and controversy to the hypothesis, as researchers rely on computer simulations and modeling to explore its potential impact. What makes this notion particularly interesting is its implication for the formation and development of our solar system. The idea that an unseen fifth giant had a hand in safeguarding Earth raises questions about the delicate cosmic ballet that determined our planet's fate. However, skeptics argue that the lack of concrete observational data makes the hypothesis speculative and alternative explanations for the stability of the solar system without invoking a fifth giant exist. Researchers are engaged in ongoing efforts to refine simulations, gather more data, and explore the outer reaches of the solar system to either support or debunk this intriguing hypothesis. Neptune will destroy Triton. The hypothesis proposes that Triton's ultimate fate involves a dramatic collision or gravitational interaction with Neptune leading to the Moon's destruction. The primary driving force behind this theory is the tidal forces exerted by Neptune on Triton as it orbits the planet in the opposite direction of Neptune's rotation. These tidal interactions are causing Triton's orbit to gradually decay, bringing it closer to Neptune over time. The intriguing aspect of this notion lies in its implication for the future of Triton and the complex interplay of gravitational gravitational forces within the Neptune-Triton system. Scientists speculate that as Triton inches closer to Neptune, tidal forces will intensify, potentially causing tidal heating and tidal despinning, altering Triton's rotation until it becomes tidally locked with Neptune. Controversy arises from the uncertainties surrounding the precise timeline and mechanisms of Triton's potential demise. Some argue that while tidal interactions may lead to Triton's destruction, the process could take billions of years making it a distant and gradual event. Others contend that factors like resonances with other moons or the influence of additional outer solar system bodies could complicate the predictions. Ganymede's magnetic field Ganymede, Jupiter's largest moon and the largest moon in our solar system, boasts a magnetic field that has long puzzled scientists. The Galileo spacecraft, which conducted extensive observations of Ganymede in the 1990s, provided crucial data indicating the presence of a significant magnetic field around the moon. However, the source and nature of Ganymede's magnetic field have remained enigmatic. The interesting aspect of Ganymede's magnetic field 
lies in its unconventional origin. Unlike Earth, which generates its magnetic field through a dynamo process involving the movement of molten iron in its core, Ganymede's interior is believed to consist of a partially liquid iron-nickel core surrounded by a layer of ice. The exact mechanism driving the Moon's magnetic field, known as the non-dynamo magnetic field, is not fully understood. The controversy surrounding Ganymede's magnetic field centers on the unexpected strength and complexity of the magnetic signals detected by the spacecraft. Scientists initially anticipated a weaker magnetic field given Ganymede's composition and size. The discrepancy between theoretical predictions and observational data has led to ongoing debates. One intriguing hypothesis posits that Ganymede's magnetic field is generated through a unique process involving the interaction between its subsurface ocean, composed of salty water and the surrounding ice. The mystery of Ganymede's magnetic field continues to stimulate scientific curiosity and prompts the development of new models to account for its unconventional characteristics. The number of moons of Jupiter and Saturn is always changing. The number of moons orbiting Jupiter and Saturn is in a state of constant flux, showcasing the dynamic and ever-evolving nature of these gas giant satellite systems. Both planets have extensive moon populations, with Jupiter currently boasting the highest number of confirmed moons among all the planets in our solar system. Observations and discoveries of new moons are ongoing, leading to periodic updates in the official counts. The intriguing aspect of this phenomenon is the continuous detection of new moons and the occasional loss of previously identified ones. The dynamic nature of Jupiter's and Saturn's gravitational environments allows for the capture of small celestial bodies such as asteroids or even distant Kuiper Belt objects into orbit around these massive planets. On the other hand, moons may also be ejected or collide with other moons, resulting in their disappearance from the planetary systems. Controversy arises from the challenge of defining what constitutes a moon, especially when dealing with smaller and more distant objects. The distinction between moons, irregular satellites and temporary captured objects can sometimes be blurry, leading to debates within the scientific community about the inclusion or exclusion of certain bodies in the official moon count. An unexplained and intriguing aspect is the possibility of hidden or yet-to-be-discovered moons lurking in the vastness of Jupiter's and Saturn's domains. Advanced observational technologies such as powerful telescopes and spacecraft missions continually enhance our ability to explore and detect these elusive objects. Mars is terraforming itself. The idea that Mars is terraforming itself presents a captivating hypothesis in the study of the red planet's evolution. Scientists propose that various natural processes on Mars may be contributing to the gradual transformation of its environment, making it more Earth-like over an extended period. One curious aspect of this notion involves the role of dust storms on Mars. Dust storms are common occurrences on the planet, and researchers believe that these storms could play a role in the potential terraforming process. The fine particles in the Martian atmosphere could have interactions with the surface, influencing properties like thermal inertia and albedo. Additionally, the settling of dust on the polar ice caps might enhance their ability to trap heat, contributing to the overall warming of Mars. The controversy surrounding the self-terraforming idea revolves around the timescale and the feasibility of such a process. While some scientists acknowledge that certain mechanisms like dust-related processes could contribute to gradual changes on Mars, others argue that the scale and pace of transformation may be insufficient to render the planet truly habitable for humans humans within a reasonable time frame. Now that we're done with Tier 6, let's get into the darker depths of Tier 7, where things get more interesting. Fifth giant is Planet 9. The fifth giant often refers to the hypothetical Planet 9, a theorized large planet situated beyond the known gas giants in our solar system. Planet 9 is proposed to exist based on gravitational anomalies observed in the orbits of distant transneptunian objects and other bodies in the Kuiper Belt. This theoretical planet, if confirmed, would be the fifth giant in our solar system. The term Planet 9 9 emerged from the need to explain the unusual clustering and alignment patterns seen in the trajectories of the transneptunian objects. The connection between the fifth giant and planet 9 lies in their shared identity as a proposed massive distant planet beyond Neptune, offering a plausible explanation for the observed gravitational effects on distant celestial bodies. The ongoing search for planet 9 involves observational campaigns and the refinement of models to better understand its potential existence and characteristics. 
Planet 9 is a black hole. The intriguing and speculative notion that Planet 9 could be a black hole introduces a fascinating twist to the ongoing search for the mysterious celestial body. Unlike traditional notions of a distant massive planet, the suggestion that it could be a primordial black hole brings forth questions about the formation and existence of such objects in the outer regions of our solar system. Black holes are typically associated with the remnants of massive stars, and the idea of a primordial black hole existing in the outskirts of our solar system system opens up new avenues for exploration and theoretical understanding. Controversy surrounds this hypothesis due to the lack of direct evidence and the unconventional nature of such a proposal. Traditional methods for detecting planets, such as direct observation or gravitational influences on surrounding objects, may not be applicable if Planet 9 is a black hole. Theoretical challenges also arise as scientists grapple with explaining how a black hole could form in the early universe and end up in the outer reaches of our solar system. The unexplained and intriguing aspect of this idea is the potential impact a black hole could have on the dynamics of the outer solar system. The gravitational effects on surrounding objects might differ significantly from those of a traditional planet, prompting further investigations into the observed orbital anomalies in the region. The solar system is full of primitive life. The notion that the solar system is full of primitive life poses the possibility that basic microbial life forms might exist on various celestial bodies, particularly those with conditions conducive to sustaining life. The interesting aspect of this hypothesis lies in the potential for life to exist in unexpected and unconventional environments. As mentioned before, moons such as Europa and Enceladus, the subsurface oceans beneath icy crusts, and the methane lakes of Titan are considered prime targets for the search for primitive life. These environments, while hostile to human life, might harbor extremophiles or microbial life adapted to extreme conditions, challenging conventional notions of habitability. The search for extraterrestrial life has primarily focused on Mars and icy moons, yet definitive proof remains elusive. Critics argue that the conditions required for life may be rare and that the likelihood of finding primitive life in our solar system outside of Earth is uncertain. The intriguing aspect of this notion is the potential existence of life forms with biochemistries vastly different from those on Earth. Life adapted to extreme cold, high radiation or unique chemical compositions could broaden our understanding of the possible diversity of life in the universe. The solar system used to be a binary star system. The notion that the solar system may have originated as a binary star system has gained attention in the field of astrophysics, presenting a compelling hypothesis about the early dynamics of our celestial neighborhood. According to this idea, the Sun, in its formative years, might have had a companion star in close proximity, forming a binary system. One interesting aspect of this hypothesis lies in the potential impact a binary companion could have had on the solar system's architecture and the formation of planets. The gravitational interplay between the Sun and its companion star could have influenced the distribution of material in the protostellar disk. This gravitational dance might have affected the orbits of planets, their inclinations and even their types. Computer simulations suggest that the presence of a binary companion could lead to distinct patterns in the arrangement of planets, providing a novel perspective on the observed characteristics of our solar system. Nibiru is Planet 10 Nibiru, often associated with doomsday prophecies and conspiracy theories, has been suggested by some to be an undiscovered celestial body, possibly the tenth planet in our solar system. One curious aspect of this hypothesis is the mythology and pseudoscientific narratives surrounding Nibiru. Some proponents claim that Nibiru follows an elongated orbit that periodically brings it closer to Earth, leading to catastrophic events. This notion has gained traction in certain fringe communities, capturing public imagination and fueling speculations about the existence of an unknown planetary body lurking in the outer solar system. However, mainstream astronomy and planetary science reject the idea of Nibiru as Planet 10. Comprehensive sky surveys and observational data have not provided evidence for a massive hidden planet on a collision course with Earth. The search for additional planets beyond Neptune often referred to as Planet 9 or Planet 10, is grounded in scientific inquiry, but the concept of Nibiru often diverges into pseudoscience and sensationalism. The topic serves as a cautionary example of how misinformation and unfounded theories can capture public attention and generate unwarranted concern. Nath, initially claimed as a natural satellite of Venus, 
was first spotted by Giovanni Cassini in 1672. However, it wasn't until 1686 that Cassini formally announced his discovery. Earlier sightings in 1645 by Francesco Fontana hinted at Nate's existence. Numerous astronomers reported observations until 1668, marking the last sighting. Despite initial enthusiasm, doubts emerged. In 1761, Joseph Lagrange suggested Nate's orbital plane was perpendicular to the ecliptic, but skepticism grew. Jean Leron de Lambert questioned Venus having the moon and by 1766 the Vienna Observatory speculated Nath's sightings were optical illusions. Lambert estimated Nath's orbital period in 1777. By 1887 the Belgian Academy of Sciences attributed sightings to stars near Venus. Ultimately, Nath's classification as a moon was debunked. The consensus pointed to observational errors, optical illusions and misidentification of nearby stars. Jupiter will eject Mercury from the system. The notion that Jupiter could eject Mercury from the solar system is a hypothetical scenario rooted in the dynamics of planetary interactions. In gravitational systems such as our solar system, the movements of planets can influence each other over long periods. This concept is encapsulated in the NICE model, a theoretical framework proposing that the giant planets, including Jupiter, experienced a period of orbital instability early in the solar system's history. According to the NICE model, the gravitational interactions between between giant planets caused significant orbital changes. In certain scenarios, Jupiter's orbit could have migrated inward, leading to close encounters with smaller planets like Mercury. These encounters may result in gravitational perturbations that could potentially eject Mercury from the solar system. However, it's crucial to emphasize that this is a theoretical concept and no direct evidence supports the idea that Jupiter will eject Mercury. Saturn is a hellish planet. Saturn does not have a solid surface like Earth, so it doesn't have a traditional surface to stand on. If we were to hypothetically consider Saturn as a hellish planet, it would be due to several extreme conditions. Saturn's atmosphere is composed mainly of hydrogen and helium with trace amounts of other gases. The atmospheric pressure increases with depth, creating an environment inhospitable to human life. The lack of a solid surface and the abundance of gases would make it challenging for humans to survive. Saturn is a massive planet with a strong gravitational pull. The gravity on Saturn is much stronger than on Earth, making movement difficult and putting immense strain on the human body. While the outer layers of Saturn are cold, the planet's core is thought to be extremely hot. The temperature increases as you move towards the center, reaching potentially thousands of degrees Celsius. As a gas giant, Saturn doesn't have a solid surface like Earth, instead it transitions from a gaseous atmosphere to a dense, hot core. This lack of solid surface would pose numerous challenges for any form of exploration or settlement. Saturn's magnetosphere produces strong radiation belts, creating a hazardous environment for spacecraft and unprotected explorers. The high levels of radiation could damage electronic equipment and pose serious health risks to living organisms. In summary, while Saturn is a fascinating celestial body, its composition, lack of a solid surface, extreme temperatures, intense gravity and hostile atmosphere make it an inhospitable and challenging environment for any form of human activity. Callisto killed the dinosaurs. Callisto, one of Jupiter's moons, couldn't have hypothetically killed dinosaurs, as it is an inanimate celestial body. However, in a speculative scenario, we can explore a hypothetical chain of events. For instance, if an asteroid or a comet were to collide with Callisto and generate significant fragments, some of these fragments might be ejected into space. If one such fragment were to intersect with Earth, it could potentially cause an impact event similar to the one often associated with the extinction of dinosaurs. In this speculative scenario, Callisto itself wouldn't be directly responsible for the extinction event. Instead, it would be an indirect consequence of a celestial collision. However, as I previously mentioned it, the most widely accepted scientific explanation for the extinction event is the impact of a large asteroid or comet around 66 million years ago, creating the Chicxulub crater in present-day Mexico. Haumea Controversy The controversy surrounding the discovery of Haumea, a dwarf planet in the Kuiper Belt, unfolded in the mid-2000s. Discovered by a team led by Michael Brown at Caltech in 2004, the naming process faced delays and disputes. A Spanish team announced it earlier and claimed credit. Brown accused them of using Caltech observations without acknowledgement, alleging fraud. In turn, the Spanish team accused Brown's team of political interference with the International Astronomical Union. The IAU, responsible for naming celestial bodies, eventually 
officially recognized the Californian team's proposed name Haumea over the Spanish team's suggestion Ateicina in September of 2008. The controversy was exacerbated by the team's different accounts of when they found Haumea in their respective data. The IAU protocol dictated that credit for discovery goes to the first team submitting a report with sufficient data for orbit determination. The aftermath saw tensions between the teams, with Spanish team admitting accessing Caltech data but denying wrongdoing. Brian Marsden, head of the Minor Planet Center, supported Brown and the IAU named Haumea in line with Hawaiian mythology, where Haumea is the goddess of fertility and childbirth. The naming choice was influenced by Haumea's rocky composition and the presence of two moons named after Haumea's daughters. The controversy highlighted ethical concerns in scientific discovery and naming processes with accusations of fraud and political bias. Tarkic, the moon with a face. Tarkic stands as one of Saturn's natural satellites discovered and announced on April of 2007. This discovery was based on observations made between 2006 and 2007. The moon derives its name from the Inuit moon god Tarkic and is part of the Inuit group of irregular satellites, characterized by its roughly 7 km diameter. Tarkic exhibits unique features, being the slowest rotating irregular moon as measured by the Cassini-Huygens spacecraft. It takes about 76 hours to complete one rotation and its shape is roughly ellipsoidal. Tarkic's face in the Solar System wiki previously had the image of a strange statue with a face. Eventually, this was taken as fact and now some people think Tarkic actually has a face. Basically, the page dedicated to Tarkic once featured an image that looked like a potato with facial features. Over time, this depiction gained acceptance as a factual representation, leading to a perception among some individuals that Tarkic indeed possesses a face. Actually, not a single spacecraft made a close flyby to to make a photograph of this moon, so actually all of these potato images turned out to be fake. Mercury is shrinking. Mercury, like all planets, experiences heat loss over time due to its proximity to the Sun, leading to a reduction in its internal volume of rock and metal. Scientists have observed a decrease of 7 km in Mercury's radius since 1974, resulting in the formation of wrinkles or scarps on its surface. However, the current rate of this shrinkage and the duration of the process remain unknown. Recent research published in Nature Geoscience by scientists from the Open University suggests that Mercury is currently undergoing significant and shrinkage. The study focuses on the unique geological structure known as grabbins, identified through global mapping of tectonic features using messenger mission imagery. Unlike scarps, which date back about 3 billion years, grabbins are smaller structures resulting from the stretching and bending of the planet's crust. They are about 0.6 miles in length, 300 feet deep and formed due to crustal bending rather than stretching. The study identified 48 definite grabbins and 244 likely grabbins, estimating their age to be around 300 million years or younger. This suggests continued activity in Mercury's shortening structures into relatively recent times. Professor David Rothery from the Open University anticipates insights from the Bepi Colombo mission launched in 2018 to explore Mercury's surface. Higher resolution images expected in late 2025 could provide more data shedding light on the mysteries of Mercury's ongoing transformation. Mercury used to be habitable. Mercury, despite its current harsh conditions, may have had regions in its subsurface that were once habitable. Researchers from the Planetary Science Institute proposed that some areas in Mercury's chaotic terrains, characterized by vast knob fields, might have supported prebiotic chemistry or even simple microscopic life forms. The study, published in Scientific Reports in March 2020, challenges previous ideas about the formation of these terrains. The chaotic terrains, initially observed by the Mariner 10 flybys in 1974, and later examined with higher resolution images from the Messenger spacecraft were thought to result from seismic disturbances caused by the calories basin impact. However, the new study suggests that the terrains formed due to the removal of massive amounts of volatiles from Mercury's upper crust. The process persisted until approximately 1.8 billion years ago, indicating a prolonged activity period. The researchers identify volcanic heat as a potential cause for the release of crustal volatiles, transforming vast lava fields and contributing to the escape of enormous volumes of volatiles over an area larger than California. The study concludes that Mercury's upper crust may have comprised diverse volatile compounds, potentially making it habitable in certain subsurface regions. While Mercury's surface is inhospitable due to extreme temperatures and lack of atmosphere, the study raises intriguing possibilities about habitable niches existing in the planet's subsurface. 
The Vera and Ornus entry refers to a theory that Venus was created by two planets called Vera and Ornus and that Venus used to have a moon named Aura for quite some time at the beginning of our solar system. However, there is no scientific evidence. Venus, like other planets in our solar system, likely formed from the solar nebula, a rotating disk of gas and dust left over from the formation of the Sun. I hope you enjoyed today's iceberg video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.